Well, series record, Tennessee leads it nine games to one, and they've won six straight. The only win for the Arkansas Razorbacks was 92 in Knoxville. We've already told you about last year's game, which was just one of the great college football games oh, of the season. That one will go down in history. Well, you know, interesting, Arkansas gets the football. That's what they wanted to do. They wanted the football first. They want to get Clinton Sterner off to that quick start. They're going to get a chance. That's David Leverton ready to kick off for the Volunteers. Chris Cobbs, the freshman, is the deep man. And he's having trouble with the sun. Dave, I watched yeah. the players warm up, and passing the ball toward that direction is a problem early. We're still late morning here in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Let's take a look at our Regents Bank starting lineup for Arkansas. Their backs and receivers, Anthony Lucas, one of the best that ever played at that position in the Southeastern Conference, the split in. Joe Dean Davenport, also an NFL prospect. On the offensive line, Melton, remarkable story. Oh, amazing. <laughs> Didn't think he was going to be able to play today because of an injury last week against Ole Miss, but he's practiced all week, and he's there. He's a tough kid. Clint Sterner. The all-time leading passer in University of Arkansas football history. But they see if they don't go to short passes, quick passes, maybe the running game, but they want to give Sterner a lot of confidence. And they throw it short. Anthony Lucas, the first of what we expect to see many receptions for Lucas today. Volunteer defensively. Ellison Walker, tremendous talents, along with Henderson, who has uh, stepped in and plugged the gap of the loss of Billy Ratliff earlier in the season, done a nice job. Stevenson, Westmoreland, Raynock Thompson. Thompson, a semifinalist for the Butkus Award. And in the secondary, Goodrich and Grant have a combined 23 interceptions in their college football career. They are ball hawkers yeah, they back are. There. You don't throw close to them, not unless he's wide open. This is Chuck Puma. And he needed the 30 to get a first down. He'll be well short of the mark, just getting back to the line of scrimmage. Sean Ellis, the senior from Anderson, South Carolina, made the tackle. Well, we'll see a lot of that today. Big linemen, they come off the ball. Tennessee has great speed in their front seven. They are just incredible. And Chakuma now, if he can get outside or he can break through, they're really interested in his start. They've got Cobbs as the backup, but they want to see how Chakuma starts off. Two weeks ago, he was incredible. Started off real fast. Arkansas third down conversion percentage. And they need three yards here. And they will not get it. The pass thrown out for Williams and incomplete. Sterner overthrew him. Lott had good coverage. Tennessee's secondary is just a uh, real solid. Yeah, and Raynock Thompson did a, set, a middle blitz on that play. Sterner had no time to look up when he made his little play faction, play fake in action, came back and bang, he had number 46 looking up his nostrils. Arkansas are going to have to punt on their first possession. Chris Aiken back to punt the ball, and Eric Parker is the deep man for Tennessee. Oh, we got a boomer. Nice driving kick. Parker gets it at the 30. And is dropped at the 34-yard line. Nathan Norman. 53-yard punt for Aiken and a four-yard return. Regents Bank starting lineup for Tennessee offensively. Bartholomew gets the start at the fullback position. Wilson has a sore hamstring. We'll keep an eye on him. He only had three catches last week against Notre Dame. And the offensive line of Tennessee, one of the best in college football. Quarterback T. Martin gives to Lewis, and Arkansas is all over it. Carlos Paul. Number 55 made the initial contact and then had lots of help yeah. from his friends. And that was interesting to me. Carlos Hall's number 55, left ear screen, backside. Look at this. When, when Jamal Lewis looks up, he sees number 55 coming down the line. You're going to have to, you're just going to have to keep somebody on Carlos Hall. He's not big, but he's got great speed. Well, there's a stat that makes T. Martin what I consider the best quarterback in college football. 20 and 1. You don't get much better than that. That's the most important stat. Picked off. Arkansas's got the interception. David Barrett weaving through the Tennessee players into the end zone for a touchdown. <laughs> 42 yards.
You wanted a fast start. Houston Nutt said, I'll know in the first five minutes how good we are. Out in the flat. This ball just goes off the hands of Jamal Lewis and into the hands of David Barrett. And Barrett is their outstanding corner. They always match him up on the best player. What a start for Arkansas. Barrett's seventh career interception. Tony Dotson with the extra point. The Razorbacks are out to a 7 to nothing lead. They were stunned early last week in the game against Ole Miss on a 100-yard kick return to start the game. And this week, they're off and running with a Barrett interception return for a touchdown. Brought to you in part by Advance Auto Parts. The best part is our people. David Barrett just uh, made the huge defensive play for Arkansas. The Razorbacks had not forced a fumble or an interception for two weeks. It's been three games since they forced a mistake from the opposition. That's a big one for the Razorbacks. And this guy is capable of making a big play, Leonard Scott. Watson kicking off. Scott. The world-class sprinter. And the Razorbacks swarm him at the 20-yard line. Well, it's interesting as we watch Tennessee come out here. Think about this. Remember our conversations yesterday with Keith Burns, their defensive coordinator of Arkansas. He says, we play with emotion. Right there, you see the tip. Jamal Lewis, Barrett, right back there. I mean, he's ready to come up. This is the kind of play that can give you huge emotion. This is the kind of play I think Arkansas needed to start this football game to get that emotional happening last year off their backs. Now T. Martin, watch him settle in. One of the keys for the Razorbacks was to force Tennessee into some turnovers. Lewis, no place to go. Quentin Caver made the tackle for Arkansas. And he is a solid tackler. Razorbacks defensively. Garner, Cooper, Davis, and Hall along the front four. Caver, we just saw him make a big tackle. Jamal Harris and Jeremy Flowers, the linebackers. And uh, the secondary, we've already seen David Barrett. Kanoi Kennedy also is a player that you'll keep an eye on. He's a tremendous player as a free safety. Well, it's really interesting. As We had a penalty on that first down play. I wondered if someone lined up in the neutral zone to start. But it was a five-yard penalty. They'll repeat first down. Well, we had an offside call. Arkansas. And it's first and five for Tennessee. They try to run up the oh, middle again. Wow. And Hall <laughs> decked him. Oh, decked him. You talk about a clothesline. It's like the old one where you ran into the wire. Wow, this Jamal Lewis's feet went out from under. Now, was there a face mask on it? There's a flag all the way across the field. Watch number 55 Hall come in here. Left of your screen. Watch this. Up high. Boy, that, yeah, that looks like face mask, maybe, uh, from that angle. Uh, Boy, Houston Nutt did not like that call. Look at him. He's not going to win that argument, though. Oh, no, you don't win with those guys yeah. in striped shirts. I remember those days. But uh, the way Jamal Lewis went down, wow. You knew it had to be up high. I thought it might have been in the neck, but... Uh, Boy, that was a drag. Wow. Back-to-back -back penalties on the Razorbacks give Tennessee the ball at their 39. They want to run it between the tackles. And here they go again on the draw. Lewis. And for the first time, Lewis has a little bit of running room. Jeremiah Harper made the stop for Arkansas. Well, that's one of the few plays that you can run out of that shotgun formation. It's a forward handoff. T. Martin gets the ball, hands it to Jamal. Let's look at him look for that hole. They love to see him get into that hole quickly like he does. Watch how quickly he gets going. Arkansas was pointing at him, but they couldn't get across. Good blocks up front. Especially, I think, Spencer Riley, 68. The center had a great block on Jamal Harris, 45, the middle linebacker. Another first down for the Volunteers. Trailing 7 to nothing on an interception by David Barrett. Quarterback draw. About three yards as Martin is able to squirt ahead to the 47. Harris made the tackle. 
Well, Tennessee loves to run the football. They've got great running backs and, and a third running back, probably the most potent uh, quarterback running back in the uh, SEC is T. Martin. He puts that football down. How many times have we seen him over the years, you know, just get his team out of trouble by that quarterback scramble? There's uh, his total <laughs> offensive numbers for the season. Seven rushing touchdowns. Lewis again. Wrapped up on the outside by number 45, Jamel Harris. Not much room between the tackles except for that one time they played, they ran the draw play, but uh, just handing it off to Jamal Lewis, they've not had anywhere to go. Well, if you can make him change his point right there, make him break outside, you've got a chance to catch him. He is most dangerous when he breaks through that huddle, gets into the secondary. Keith Burns, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, said third downs are going to be monumental. Here's one of them, third down about six. Boy, you'll be able to tell by these fans how, what this third down does. Lewis, number three all time, leading rusher in Tennessee football history. He's come back nicely from the torn ACL injury last year in the Auburn game and is backed up by Travis Henry, who I'm sure we're going to see a lot of later on today as well. So Arkansas is out to an early lead, seven to nothing. We'll be back after. It's got to be play action. It's got to be play action. Consecutive first downs now. They sit at Arkansas's 39. Here comes an audible on the line. You see T. Martin turn all the way around and call it. Lewis trying to break to the outside, but Arkansas is there after about a three yard gain. Point. Kanoi Kennedy, number 29. He's a strong safety. He'll see a lot of Jamal Lewis today. I mean, he comes up, and Lewis is going to fall forward. And you ought to see when Kanoi Kennedy, number 29, hits him. Miss tackle on the line right in here. Right in there is a missed tackle. But watch Kennedy. Bang. That's the way you come up in free safety. Kennedy's a player that the Razorbacks expect to move around a lot today. He's going to keep an eagle eye on T. Martin also. They're responsible to catch up with Martin in a scramble situation. Up the middle, Travis Henry gets his first carry of the football game, crossing the 35 to the 33 of Tennessee. And you know, it's interesting to talk with Houston Nutt. He said, I'll know in the first five minutes how we're going to play. And I'll tell you this, he may know already because it is a physical game. You see up front, nobody breaking through. You see everybody scrambling to the football. This is just going to be a great football game all day long. Arkansas defense certainly has come to play. They were stunned last week at Ole Miss. And trying to battle back this week. Another third down play for the Volunteers. Martin rolling. There is a flag down. The Volunteers appear to have the first down with Cedric Wilson. But there is a penalty flag on the field. Yeah, I thought I saw a jump on the top side on the defensive line. Might have been over on Randy Garner's side, number one. But I think someone from Arkansas jumped into the neutral zone snap early. But we'll wait in here. That's it. Offsides on the defense. It's declined. First down. Referee Harold Mitchell. The head of today's Southeastern Conference officiating crew. And the volunteer drive continues. They try to put some points on the scoreboard. Arkansas trying to make them go a long way to do it. This drive started at the Tennessee 20. Yeah, a lot of plays by Tennessee. Arkansas not giving up much on those on those downs, but Tennessee is so strong. I mean, they pick up three, four yards every down. They're just like a machine. They just keep on rolling. Lewis, the tailback. And they give it to him. Arkansas is on the corner again. There's the free safety, yeah. Kanoi Kennedy. Yep, 29, Kanoi Kennedy. I want to tell you, he is a football player. Watch this. He sees him, comes up. He's in the, almost in the box. Now, get lateral and watch what he does. You can't run without those legs. He goes down, dumps Jamal Lewis. If you hit him up high, he's going to run over top of you. Kennedy, a pretty good stat size. He's their leading tackler with 69 total tackles. That shows why he's very active.
On second down, Martin going deep. Too deep. Pass was intended for Eric Parker and overthrown. Barrett had good coverage. Teams generally have not thrown toward David yeah. Barrett. Well, Barrett, Tennessee goes at him there. You're right, David. Uh, Barrett is their outstanding cornerback. He's their best one-on-one -on -one player. That time he was matched up, and he just runs step for step. They really like the way he covers in that, that zone, especially when they have that blitz. And, and he's got that man coverage, I should say, on the outside. They really like him. Senior from Osceola, Arkansas. Right now, he's uh, accounting for all of the points yeah. in the ball game with that 43-yard interception return in the first two minutes of the game. Third down and 11. Interesting formation. Four men to the, to the strong side of the formation. Four wide receivers. And Martin looks the other way. Oh, Almost a great catch. Oh, wow. Would have been a spectacular catch by Cedric Wilson. But yeah, instead, here comes Tennessee's field goal team. Yeah, this was throwback action. What they're trying to do is they're trying to draw everybody to the left. And you see Martin look there, but look at the pressure from the backside. Jamel Harris, number 45, is a middle linebacker. But watch this catch. Coming back, look at that. Oh, man, that was awfully close. Everton will attempt the field goal. There is numbers on the season. This one from 43 yards. It's ugly, wow. but it's good. It wasn't pretty. It was a bullet. It was low, but it counts. <laughs> and Tennessee is on the scoreboard on the walls. 43-yard field goal. Arkansas 7, Tennessee 3. You see to a field goal. And that's big. You can yeah. uh, allow them to drive the ball, but Arkansas able to stop them and keep them to three. Look at the, the sun creating the problems for Cobbs, and he just lets the ball hit on the ground. Next week, the Bell South Southeastern Conference Game of the Week. Well, there will be two of them from Lexington, Kentucky. Tennessee Volunteers, again, featured along with the Kentucky Wildcats. Kentucky trying to get into the bowl picture. A big one today for them against Vanderbilt. And Clemson, South Carolina, the battle of the Gamecock State. And we'll have it for you next Saturday on the Bell South Southeastern Conference Game of the Week. Well, Dave, for Sterner and company, for Arkansas, you don't want to come three and out again. You just had a good stand by your defense. They got your points. You want to get those first downs. Turner delivers the ball to the big tight end, Davenport, Jodine Davenport. And uh, just a couple of yards on the play. Sterner was looking deeper and then dumped it to Davenport, a reliable receiver. Yeah, he had to dump it to Davenport. He had Sean Ellis, 93, running after him. And Ellis was running stride for stride. He's a big guy, 6'4", about 275. And, man, he can run down that line. Well, this whole front four for Tennessee yeah. can run to the football. And super strong. Just really great athlete. Three yards on the play. Cobbs is now the tailback, the freshman. Marvin Caston, the fullback for Arkansas. Frederick Cobbs, who can fly. Grant bumps him out of bounds at the 47. Let me tell you what Cobbs did. He stayed with the play. And that's something a lot of freshmen don't do. This is designed outside. You're going to see a lot of crowd. But what he does is he stays. He's not going to try to cut back. He's not slowing down. He breaks and makes a nice block off his tight end's block. And then he's down the sideline. Look at Joe Dean Davenport, 85. He just really makes the hole. There's a good block out. Now cut off of it. That was Marvin Caston, I think, got that good kick-out block, and he cut underneath it, but he stayed with the play. Well, he's got a nice knack for finding the hole, doesn't he, Cobbs? Absolutely. They really like him. They think that he's obviously the heir apparent for Chris Chakuma, but Chakuma got to get such a good start, they want to stay with him. Throwing it deep for Lucas. It's a jump ball, and it's incomplete. Great coverage by Andre Lott. Well, we're going to see a lot of that. Lucas on that one-on-one -on -one coverage. Lot with great coverage that time. But Lucas, they do a lot of throwbacks to him. Look over this way here. Look left, look left. Now come back to the right and look for Anthony Lucas down the sideline. Usually when it's jump balls, Anthony Lucas wins. He's great. He has great height. Six foot three. Goes way up for the ball. But credit Lot. Oh, you want to see what it's like to play? That's how you make a tackle. They're coming right into your face. 
Of course, that's slow motion, I have to tell you. They're coming a lot faster than that. A whole lot faster. Arkansas thought, Dave, though, they needed to throw long occasionally just to keep Tennessee honest. That could have been caught by Michael Williams, thrown a little bit high, but Sterner uh, obviously thinks yeah. that should have been a completion. Well, you can see him looking out there. He doesn't want to say anything to his wide receiver, but you're supposed to catch that. When you're a senior wide receiver, as Michael Williams is, you're supposed to come down with that football. Sterner had, it had to be an incredible week for him. The emotions, all the media, everybody asked him about this game. And well, I'll tell you one thing, he handled it like a champion. Yes, he did. He's a, he's a class kid. Quality quarterback, too. And got his team out to a 7 nothing lead. It's third down, though, for Arkansas. Now the shotgun. Good protection. Beautiful throw and catch in Arkansas. Still short of a first down at the 40-yard line. Boo Williams brought the ball in nicely. Boy, that was a great catch. Now I wonder if Houston Nutt will try it. Will he go for it? Looks like it's about one yard. This is just a rope. Looking for Boo Williams on a little curl pattern right there. He's right in your screen, coming right at you. Bang. Now he comes down right on the 35-yard line. It's going to be fourth down, maybe a yard to go. And Houston Nutt, the decision is, do you go for it? It's early. Kind of looked like he said, go for it. I think he did. His defense is playing well. Now he's changed his mind. Oh. If he was thinking that way. And has brought Chris Aiken and the punt team on. Phil Fulmer trying to get his kick return team back there. Boy, he thought about it for a long time, didn't he? Yeah. Deion Grant standing back there. I think just because he was the free safety on the field when Phil Fulmer realized that Arkansas was going to punt the football. So the volunteers will be backed up to their seven-yard line after a 38-yard punt by Aiken. Other scores? No score from Columbia. The Gators and the Gamecocks. Lou Holtz looking for uh -oh. his first win. And uh -oh. oh my. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Uh, do we need to get a medic in here, Dave? <laughs> no, just give me some oxygen. Georgia Tech, of course, leading. Minnesota, that's the team that beat Penn State last week. And the Illinois is up on Ohio State. That's a big game in the MAC, Marshall. Yeah. A lot of great games going on this late in the season. Boy, they get great. Big series here for Arkansas. Need to get a stop. Tennessee, they need to get out of trouble. Martin's trying to do it in one big throw. The pass intended for Dante Stallworth. Now, he's fast, but he's not that fast. Well, you know, that time, really, when he had Stallworth, Stallworth broke out. He had a five-yard lead. You've got to lead. You've got to let off a little bit. Watch Stallworth when he gets even right here, puts a fake on right there, and turns the corner all the way around. Now, he's running wide open. You've got to kind of ease off a little bit. Safety's not going to get their help, and that was a that was going to be a long. And watch T. Martin. You can tell. Oh boy, you just tell him. He looks down. He does, tries not to show a lot of emotion, but that's one he wishes he could throw over. Could have been a 97-yard touchdown pass. They run it with Henry up the middle again, and Caver, the linebacker, makes the tackle. The fans, the Domino's Bowl Blitz sweepstakes. Entry deadline is tomorrow at 5 o'clock. Be sure to register online at jpsports.com for a chance at this football fan's dream. Now this, is a, this is a dream. Watch this. You're going to see 80,000 people stand up. A lot here from Tennessee, but also a lot from Arkansas. Big down here. Third down, about six, seven yards to go. Martin will scramble. Oh, did he make first down? Wow, that was close. I think he did. The marker like, is there, almost yeah. the 18. Yeah, he had to make just about the 18-yard line. Now, where do they mark it? Oh, that's close. One of the things that makes T. Martin such a great quarterback, his ability to do just this. Yeah, and you know what's amazing? He knows where he has to go, and that's really, that's having presence of mind here. You'll see him stretch out right there and reach, and see right away he's going, I got it. So look him, look at the sideline, see where the marker banner is. Oh, that is a, that is a great quarterback, and you can do that. He's special. Boy, did that hole close quickly when Henry got into the gap. Delancey Kent came right in there and put a big hit on him. Well, both coaches told us it's going to be a physical game. This is a physical game. When you can hear it up in the in the press box, that's that's impressive. 
You see what uh, Travis Henry did last year against Arkansas. He had a great game. And five carries on that last drive, which culminated in the touchdown to win the game for Tennessee. There he is again. Boy, Arkansas oh, just got that middle clogged up, don't they? Well, Jeremy Flowers and company. Yeah, what they're doing is Arkansas, they're bringing their strong safety, Kanoi Kennedy, up into the box. So they've got eight to nine people standing inside that box. And they're just saying, hey, Tennessee, you want to run it? You're going to have to run against eight, nine people. So they creep them up in the box. And the thing is, Dave, Tennessee doesn't mind that. No, they know that no, Arkansas has got eight men yeah. in the box. And they think that they can just uh, beat them on the, on the line of scrimmage. Well, if I had Jamal Lewis and uh, Travis Henry, and I might off, decide that, that offensive line. Absolutely, and that big offensive line. Line. Houston says let's make some noise and they are at Razorback Stadium on third down and three four wide receivers for Tennessee and oh, a flag I wonder if the clock went out yes the clock's at zero that may be five yards well that changes the complexion of this oh. third down play Boy, that's a that's a big down, and you can see Philip Fulmer doesn't like that. He runs this offense. He, it's just the perfect offense for him. It's kind of it's almost like his personality. He doesn't like mistakes. That's a mistake. And this Tennessee team has been peaking. They've been building late in the season. They just dominated Notre Dame last week. They've won six in a row, and they've got their hands full today in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Arkansas needs a big rush. They've got to get pressure on T. Martin. Out of the shotgun. He had plenty of time. Ooh, I don't know if he made that. And Graham made the catch, but he needed the 34 almost, and I don't think he'll have it. Wow, he did. That, that was close, though. T. Martin, I'll tell you, that offensive line gave him great time. He could stand back there. You watch him. Ready your screen. You're going to watch him. Stand back there. Look at the big men here. That's Chad Clifton in here blocking on this side. You got to come all the way around the outside now. Good stick there by Arkansas. Good cover up and coverage to stop that drive. But uh, and Arkansas is going to get the football back. Well, ten men up for Arkansas. I wonder if they're going to come after the football. And this is a tough sky to catch a high punt. Look for uh, Leverton to try and hang it up there. Tennessee's got the football. A dangerous sky on that end of the field. Yeah, and Morial couldn't bring it in. Yeah, he never saw the football. He didn't see it clear. Came down into that sunspot. And Tennessee, the opportunistic Tennessee, they jump on it. Constant Ritzman was the guy who jumps on it right here. Look there. You see, he never gets back on the football. It's a volunteer first down at the Razorback 30. I think they were going to keep him on the ground. <laughs> but Tennessee's got the ball, and a Arkansas turnover gives the Volunteers a great opportunity. The field position now switches in favor of the ball. They're at the Arkansas 30. Well, a huge turnover. Martin sidearms the ball, and Graham has a Tennessee first down at the Arkansas 17-yard line. And when you give Tennessee field position like this, they usually make you pay. Martin showed uh, his arm strength there. He just whipped that ball sidearm style. You know, it's interesting. He came off his first and second receivers. Graham sitting out there. That was, he really wasn't his primary receiver. He just came off his first, off his second, and as you said, just kind of bang, just whipped it out there. I look for him to go right back to that run. They are so good with that run. This is vintage Tennessee. Get down here and just smash now. They're in what they call the orange zone now inside the 20. And they set up the screen. Not much uh, blocking there. Not enough for Stallworth to get free. And he's dropped it about the 15. Boy, and Arkansas really did exactly what Tennessee wanted. They gave him a middle blitz. And they threw a screen out here into the flat. Again, look at this watch, this pattern. What you're doing is you're bouncing right there, trying to get blocks, and then try to get the scrape off, almost like a basketball pick before it happens. Stallworth comes up with the play that time. Kanoe Kennedy comes in for the tackle. I didn't see. Was there a flag on that play? I saw the official come over and say something. Oh, sideline warning. That's what it was. One of those players get back. That's Tennessee inside the 20. 
and they've converted 10 of their last 12, which that graphic did not show. Eight touchdowns in the last 12 trips into the orange zone. Wilson, and there's a flag. Pass interference on Barrett, the man who made the big interception and ran it in for a touchdown. The volunteers keep going at him, and this time they get the flag. Well, this is a good pattern. It's underneath, and what happens is Barrett, he really loses the pattern. Bottom of your screen, right there, he loses the pattern. He sees the play come inside. He makes a good effort there, but he gets that left hand on him and pulls him. Again, watch the left hand get up on the shoulder. Can't do that. But you know what's interesting in the NFL? It'll be right at the spot. It's just a penalty, so it goes all the way back to the Pass original. On the defense, it's a spot foul, automatic first down. Now you look for Tennessee just to drive it in. They bring two tight ends, Finlayson and Johnson, into the game. Lewis and Crosby have both checked in, so they're going to line it up and try to shove yeah. it right down Arkansas's throat. Well, Tennessee takes so much out of you with that grinding football game, and that's what defeats a defense when you can just stuff it right down their throat, like you said. Lewis was tripped up in the backfield. Excellent play in the backfield by Jeremy Flowers. Boy, I almost thought Jamal Lewis misplayed the ball when the ball was tossed to him. I almost thought that he, he that he misjudged it. Let's see what happens on the toss right here. See if he doesn't almost miscatch it. No, he gets it. Again, we might see it a little bit different, but see if he doesn't misjudge the ball. Well, no, not really. I think you got to give Flowers yeah. a lot of yeah, credit. Absolutely, got in the backfield. That's surprising, not just going straight ahead. That pass was deflected, almost intercepted. Wow. Harper got a piece of it, and then Barry diving almost had the INT. Boy, and the tight end was wide open on the play. Play action strong, now come right out here. Watch 96, that's Finlayson. He was wide open for the football. Again, good tip there. See the ball go up. Arkansas almost comes down with it. You see number 53, that's Caver. Wow, that's a huge play. Listen to this crowd. Third down. versus Wilson and a flag. Now what Barrett is going to say is I was playing the ball. But I think he was playing the man. And he's hit with another pass interference call. Watch Barrett. Number 18. Watch see if he plays the football. He's looking right at the man. Now he puts his hands on. No, that's pass interference. Can't do that. You got to play the football. Oh, it's almost like they've chosen to go against Barrett today. What about that? <laughs> That's amazing. Now, see if Tennessee doesn't get, just go back to what they do best. Straight ahead, smash mouth football, just plow it straight in. Don't do the toss, just straight ahead. Use those big offensive linemen. Coleman and Tucker, those kind of guys. Arkansas have got everybody stacked up. Lewis. No chance. Oh, boy, Caver, 53. You talk about... That's what we used to call kiss in the back, hello. Randy Garner in there, Carlos Hall, but 53 Caver comes over the top. Watch the tail end of this play. Jamal Lewis running up in there now, gets up high, watch this. Hello, bang, right in the nose. And that's the final play of the first quarter. Tennessee threatening deep in Arkansas territory, but the Razorbacks still in the lead, seven to three. This is just a test. Look at the total plays. Tennessee had the ball an awful lot. Straight ahead football. And they try to sneak it in with a fullback, Bartholomew, but Arkansas again closes up the middle. Caver was the first man in there. Well, you've got to credit those down linemen, those defensive linemen. Cooper, Davis, Carlos Hall, and Randy Garner getting underneath, getting that penetration, stopping that wall. You see, there's no place to go. Look at 45 coming in there. That's Jamal Harris. Up and over the top. They know they're coming. Now, if you can make Tennessee go wide, then as a defense, you've won. Tennessee, they know straight ahead's the shortest direction. And they only need one yard. After the penalty, they had the ball at Arkansas's two. 
It is third down. Jamal Lewis. Touchdown, Tennessee. Boy, an excellent block there. Tight end block. He comes up on number 30, Flowers. Neil Johnson just drives him out of there. And then Jamal, Jamal Lewis just knows where to go. Gets high. You'll see the tight end come in here. Johnson gets a good block right there. Now, just jump over top. Good lead block there by Bartholomew. That's Tennessee's strong football. And Lewis knows how to find the end zone. That's his 17th career touchdown run. And the Volunteers and the extra point as they take the lead on Arkansas. Jamal Lewis carries it in on third down and goal from the one yard line. And the Volunteers on a six game winning streak have taken the lead. Fans in attendance, it's a beautiful day. There may be one record set today. It might be the temperature. Oh. It's uh, expected to hit the low 80s, which might be an all time record high. I've been here this time of year. Let me tell you, this is a marvelous day. Cedric Cobbs. And he does have a nice feel for finding the open spot, doesn't he, Dave Rowe? We take a look at statistics from the first quarter. 34 rushing yards for Tennessee, 24 for Arkansas. We saw a graphic earlier about the number of plays. Arkansas only ran seven plays in the quarter, and of yeah. course they scored their touchdown. You look at the time of possession, 2.45. Their touchdown was scored on the interception return by David Barrett. And you see that Arkansas, that Arkansas conversion, zero for two on third down. Really, Arkansas right now has got to get some offense going. They've got to take some pressure off their defense, keep the ball away from Tennessee's vaunted offense. They need to roll the football. They need to get some points on the board or at least drive 30, 40 yards. Here comes Cobbs. First down, Arkansas. Wow, I like the way he runs. I want to tell you, he's a lot different than Chris Chikuma, but he steps over top of people. Now he watch, he's going to go off. This is actually designed to go in about the six hole, and he comes back outside. Now he stumbles there, gets his feet back. Watch this break right there. He just steps outside there. Now he almost steps. That was just a good run for a first down. That's what they need. Get that outside. That's a pretty nice average, isn't it? Two rushes, 39 yards. I wonder if he can keep that up. I don't know. Last year about this time, he was running uh, the football for Fair High School and taking them to a state championship in Little Rock. And here he is at Razorback Stadium getting the call again. It's Cobbs. I want to tell you, he stays in the hole. That is the best thing I can tell you about him. You can see his running technique, but let me tell you this. He stays in the hole. It's designed to go in the six hole, and he stays with it. He allows good blocks up front. You see Nathan Norman, 47, gets a block. Now, nobody's going to pull him down with an arm tackle, and he falls forward. That's two back-to-back -back first downs. That's what Arkansas needs. And they hurry up to the football and snap it quickly. Trying to catch Tennessee off guard, and the Volunteers just too quick for that. They were scrambling to recover, Dave, but they have uh, such tremendous athletes up front. They were able to make the, the tackle, D'Angelo Lloyd. Well, you do a lot of things as a coach. What you're trying to do is disrupt that defensive and offensive flow. So sometimes you come out and do no huddle. You do hurry up. You run a play. I mean, you hold it. And just do anything to just try to get the other team a little bit off guard. Comes an audible on the line. You see him step back out. And give to Cox. And he finds uh, enough room to pick up a couple to around the 40-yard line of Tennessee. And what about the job that Arkansas's offensive line is doing on this particular drive? There's a flag drop. Yeah, that flag was thrown really late. late. That was really, I mean, the, the play was over. I think something happened after the play. See if it's a dead ball penalty. Well, now Tennessee pointing at the other end. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. Oh, wow. Ball, personal foul on oh. the offense. Offset. Yeah, they, they, I was going to say when it was just against the defense. Wow, that's huge. Offsetting personal foul. But again, look, Clint Sterner. <laughs> he may have been the one that started it. Sterner plays with a lot of emotion. Boy, he's a tough kid. Yes. This is a big down. Arkansas has no conversions on third down. This is when they need one of those conversions. They want to keep this drive alive again. Keep the ball away from our, from Tennessee. Tennessee able to drive it 30 yards after 
recovering a fumbled punt and then had two pass interference calls to help keep their drive alive and put it in on third and goal from a one. Now Arkansas tries to answer. I think Sterner was still upset about that play. When he walked back, he said something to the official about that last play, but he's got to forget that. This is the big one. And Sterner will work from the shotgun. Comes a blitz. Tennessee coming with the blitz. Arkansas has him rolling. Lucas wide open. Inside the 10. First and goal for the Razorbacks. Boy, what a good call by Houston Nuttenstaff. Roll action. Get away from that blitz. Come strong side. And watch Sterner. He throws nicely across his body. And Lucas goes up high for it. I thought he stepped out of bounds. Right in there. I thought he stepped out of bounds. But evidently not. We had a big game against the Vols last year. And a lot of that yardage came in the first half. Arkansas's offense was by and large shut down later in the game. But he had Goodrich turned around. Cobbs. Well, he is a tough oh. guy to bring down, isn't he? He just pushes people out of the way. I Arkansas. mean, you're talking about Ellison. I know. Uh, you're talking big good guys. tacklers. Yeah, you're talking big guys. Sean Ellison. Henderson was in there that time. Cobbs just kind of pushes them away. We'll see if they don't go back to Lucas again because this is tough yardage right here. That's why I say you have to go. That's why I say you have to go back to Lucas. Two rushing touchdowns and for the season. And didn't give any up until last week yeah. when Notre Dame got two. Play action. Wide open. Touchdown. It's the tight end, Joe Dean Davenport. Arkansas is back in the lead. Arkansas had to get points. They had to do something on offense. They really used Joe Dean Divenport a lot on sneaks. And you can see right there, Sterner comes off as primary receiver and finds Joe Dean Davenport. He's a big target at 6'7", 265 pounds. Huge target. Really a factor a couple weeks ago in Auburn. It looks like he may be a factor today. Dotson's extra point is good. Arkansas answers. Joe Dean Davenport. The NFL sky, scouts love him, and fans here in Arkansas love him even more. We'll be back after a word from your local station. Joe Dean Davenport, his fourth touchdown catch of the year, the fifth of his career, and he has put the Arkansas Razorbacks on top of the second rank in the BCS, Tennessee Volunteers. Leonard Scott is the deep man. And he's got that difficult scout. And it doesn't matter. <laughs> no. Johnson just rammed it through the end zone. Well, fans, Jefferson Pilot Sports now brings you our game video coverage on the Internet. That's right. Log on to jpsports.com after the game and watch video highlights from today's broadcast and all of our games throughout the season. Enjoy every great play whenever you want to, courtesy of jpsports.com. Now, Dave, you do read my article on that, right? Every week. Every week. Thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't miss it. One of my first things to do on a Monday morning, Dave Rowe. <laughs> the Hogs are... Uh, the Hogs really are battling here today. They are. If we check out an injured player on the field. Yeah, right here on our sideline. It's actually on the Arkansas sideline. Someone got hurt right about 35 yard line. Can't see who it is. Maybe Marvin Caston. Number 33. That's who it is. Let's see if we can see it. 33 red. Right in the middle, right in there. Oh, boy, he gets hit. Wow. Ouch, that was a pretty good hit. You know, that might have been Richmond who, who uh, did that fumble return. He's quite a special teams player, number six, Richmond. Uh, he's the one that recovered that uh, punt, botched punt that led to one of the uh, Tennessee scores. And this would be a loss for Arkansas. Caston. Their number two fullback, but he plays about equal uh, 
plays with Nathan Norman and uh, threw a nice block earlier on a big Arkansas first down play. We hope he's going to be all right. Tennessee trying to keep the ball between the tackles and Travis Henry is brought down near the line of scrimmage. Well, you know, you talk about Tennessee and their great offensive line, and let me tell you, tackle to tackle, they are an outstanding offensive line. But right now, Arkansas is being just as good. They're stopping them at the point of attack. They're making the running back bounce out there. There's no big hole opening up. They're just not running the seam. Now, Ar now I'm going to tell you, you can do that. You can't do that normally this time of year. <laughs> God, no. We can't give too much props <laughs> because it's 80 degrees. But now if it's 28 and sleeting, now if I have to do that to get on television, I'm in sad trouble. Boy, almost a great catch. That's intended for Stallworth. He's got the blistering speed. And there again, Dave, yeah, trying Barrett. to pick on David Barrett. Well, Barrett gets good inside position that time. He's looking back at the football. T. Martin with a lot of time throws it up. Now watch Barrett's position. Inside playing the football. That's the way you have to do it. You got to come down with that ball or knock it away. That was almost a Tennessee completion. Big down here. Listen to the crowd. Tennessee needing a first down to wrestle the momentum away from the Razorbacks. Martin scrambling. First down oh. for the Volunteers. Boy, he throws so nicely on the run. That's one of the strengths of T. Martin. Roll along there. He's got that run option pass. Just when he gets to the line of scrimmage, bang, just throws a dart to Eric Parker. Very on the coverage again. Gets that pressure up the middle. A little inside pressure right there. You see Hall getting the pressure now. Come out of the pocket. Now watch him square up here and just throw on a dart. Just, just a, it almost looks like a flick. Again, look at that. Just all arm. Throws a strike right in there. Just a perfect target pass. Lewis in the backfield now. Interesting formation, a team formation. And they've got Ontario Smith back there with them and give it to Lewis. Boy, Lewis, look. Lewis almost bobbled that football that time. Again, it looked like that ball came, almost came clean. Like he almost didn't miss the just didn't catch the uh, handoff. Let's see if we see it. See if we see the handoff right here. See what happens on it. There's the ball. Now watch right in here. Oh, look, then down it's by the shoulders. Excuse me, by his knees and back on up. Flowers comes in. Did a nice job to hold on yeah. to the football. So you don't look at the ball when you take that hand off. The quarterback puts it right in your belly. So you don't really look at the ball in. You're looking more to see where the hold is on. That one's been some distance. Too. I know. We're looking at a, looks almost like a power eye formation. And throw deep over the middle. Great throw, but it's incomplete. What a play by Barrett. I don't know if he tipped the ball or not, but he dove out in front, got that hand out in there. That was just an incredible recovery. Leonard Scott has got great speed. It's just a post pattern. Come down in here, get plant, get inside position. Now watch Barrett. He's got to play the ball. You can't put your hand on. Look at this hand inside, and he does. He gets just a flick on it. Wow, this is a super play. Look at the speed of Scott. Right there, just gets his hand inside there. And Barrett has been called for two pass interference penalties but that was a tremendous play against uh, the NCAA 60 meter sprint champion Leonard Scott and he had closing speed Tennessee five for seven and third down conversions and they give it to Wilson he has the first down and lots more Cedric Wilson to the 30 Wilson to the 19 yard line of Arkansas this was really an interesting formation. What Tennessee did is they went three wideouts to the top of the screen. And then they came out to this flat, this side. This is a misdirection play again. Everything looks like it's going to go to T. Martin's left. And now look at the big lineman getting out here. You're on an oasis if you're number 31, DeAndre Burry, because you're trying to come up and stop. You see Kanoi Kennedy just trying to slow him down. Again, get in there, make a tackle, but a good call by Tennessee. Big play for the Vols, and they threaten to take the lead again. Trailing Arkansas 14 to 10 in the second quarter. Martin will keep it. Martin to the five. Martin touchdown Tennessee. Well, that is all T. Martin. That is the that is the problem. When you're playing defense. Let me tell you, that is the hardest thing when you have a quarterback that can rush like that. Rushing touchdown. Wow. I mean, 
mean, you just can't believe what that does to a defense. You talk about demoralizing a defense. You've getting pressure on him. You've got him back here. He's got no pass pattern now. He just runs. And he outruns everybody. He goes in untouched. Such a threat made several huge plays on that drive. And Walls' his extra point is good. And the lead seesaw is back in favor of the Big Orange. Why well, don't you love these defensive struggles? <laughs> yeah, we really nailed that one, didn't we? <laughs> T. Martin with the touchdown run to give the Volunteers a 17-14 lead. We still have 8.05 to play in the first half. <laughs> Nothing too frightening so far. In fact, just a great football game from Fayetteville, Arkansas. Hobbs has been a handful for Tennessee all day. Well, the Domino's Bowl Blitz sweepstakes ends soon. You and a friend could win an all-expense-paid trip to four college football games in just five days, including the national championship game on January 4th, uh, 2000 in New Orleans. Register online at jpsports.com by tomorrow at 5 p.m. The Domino's Bowl Blitz sweepstakes your chance for a football fan's dream trip. How much weight would you gain, Dave Rowe, going to four football games in five days? I wonder how they're going to travel in between. They're going to have to have a, a car just zipping them around or something. Oh, boy. Cobbs bottled up as he crosses the 30 to the 32-yard line. Linebacker Eric Westmoreland makes the tackle. And let's go down on the field to Greg Bowser. Well, I'll tell you, uh, for Arkansas, number 33, Marvin Caston hurt his left knee. It was pretty severe. They put a splint on it, and he is in the locker room. They're going to check it and see what, uh, how bad it is. Tough break for Caston, for the Arkansas Razorbacks. They line up with Chakuma in the backfield. By himself, receivers left and right. You want to keep a drive alive. You want to take pressure off your defense again. Oh, they're out of stance quick. That's one way to get mentioned. That might have been Sean Money. I think that was 61 left tackle. Dead ball. False start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat the down. Well, mistakes have been a factor in this first half. A pass interception by Barrett for a touchdown for the Arkansas Razorbacks. A fumbled punt by Arkansas, which set up Tennessee's first touchdown of the afternoon. And neither of these teams lately has been forcing a lot of mistakes. But today, that has not been the case. Well, in these situations, so many times you see Clint Sterner loves to go to Anthony Lucas. He's got a good matchup down the bottom here against Dwayne Goodrich. One-on-one -on -one situation is what you want if you're going to go to Lucas. He's had good protection today. Lucas at the 41. Good call, Dave. Well, you want to get him on that matchup, that one-on-one -on -one situation. He's dynamite. He goes up high for the football. He's fearless. You can see it again. Look strong side now. Come back to him. He's left of your screen. And watch Lucas go up for the football. High, great concentration. Raynock Thompson was out there too. And he had time to throw. Offensive line giving him some time right there. You see the big men up front. Washburn and uh, of course that's Bobby Williams, 69. Good blocking up front, giving him time to look downfield. Williams is the federal on that offensive line, number 69. Cobbs, the freshman, back in the game, brought down by Westmoreland. Boy, I thought that time that Sterner had pulled that football out and rolled out strong side. They, they just started up the band. Everybody went with Cobbs. When he went left, everybody went with him. They do that really effective at Arkansas. They pull that football out and then let that tight end sneak across and dump it to him. Coaches up here in the boxes, they, they saw that too. Second and nine. Here comes the blitz. Arkansas picks it up and there's single coverage. Now the safety comes over. Grant almost was there in time to make an interception. Boo Williams, the intended receiver. Well, I'll tell you one thing. Deion Grant, number seven, is a great center fielder. Just a great center fielder. Plays the quarterback's eyes. You can see him. He's left of your screen. He's way in the back. Now watch him come over. He looks at the quarterback. Look at him go high. You wonder why he's got six interceptions. Plays the ball remarkably well. And Lott had good coverage uh, also, the cornerback. Deion Grant is the man who is down on the field. Way downfield where, where he came down. I think he may have just come down wrong. 
Kind of scrunched up there on about the 23 yard line is Deion Grant. There he is, the junior from Augusta, Georgia. Boy, they don't want to lose him. You don't like seeing him. And he's reaching back, looks, feels like a hamstring perhaps. A lot of times that'll happen when you come down odd, you stretch that hamstring. You can see his left hand around it. Let's take a look at some other scores in the second quarter. Florida struggling again this week. South Carolina trying to get its first victory. Penn State still trailing. Wow, look and at that. Look one. at the halftime score. Georgia Tech and Clemson. Another close one. Boy, Illinois laying it on. Ohio State 29 to 7. Big down here for Sterner. Needs to come up. He's got four wideouts from the shotgun. They're bringing pressure. And they give it to Lucas again. Oh, did he stretch far enough? He had to make about the 48-yard line. You saw him reach out with the football. I don't know if he got it. No. Nope. Going to be a yard short at the 49. He needed the 48. That's still a great effort by Lucas. Boy, pressure from Sterner's right. You're going to see those white shirts flash in here. Look at this good concentration. Now watch the tail end. He knows how far he has to go. See him reaching out with that football? Just trying to get that first down. This is underneath catch. What you do is run underneath. It's actually almost like a block. Now right in here. And credit a good tackle there by Dwayne Goodrich, number 23. Keep him from getting that first down. I wonder if Houston Nutt would call a timeout and think about going for this. It was in a similar situation in the first quarter. And almost made the call to go for it. It appeared on fourth down, elected to punt the football. And this time he does want to give himself a little more time to think it over. Well, two schools of thought on it. Do you go for it? If you go for it, don't make it. You're in trouble. But you don't hear enough about those kinds of young oh. people. They're big and marvelous kids. I call them kids. I guess they're 21. I might get in trouble, but to for me, you, they're kids. For you and me, they're, yeah, kids. they're kids, but they're great. Chris Aiken will punt it. Tennessee not even going to try to field this punt. That's probably a wise move. Arkansas might be wishing they had uh, done the same thing a little bit earlier in the football game. It's out of bounds at the 12. A 36-yard punt. And Tennessee will take over the football. Once again, next week, the Bell South Southeastern Conference Game of the Week from Lexington, Kentucky. How Mummy's Wildcats will try to upset Philip Fulmer's volunteers. Or some of you might see the Clemson-South Carolina game from Columbia. Yeah, we split up next week. You go to Clemson and uh, South Carolina, and I go to Kentucky and uh, Tennessee. We'll be reunited I with think. Dave Neal. <laughs> well, we're having a great time today in Fayetteville. It's a fabulous afternoon and a wonderful football game. Tennessee with a three-point lead. And the balls keep it on the ground with Jamal Lewis. Well, now you start looking at the clock. Five minutes to go, just a touch over five minutes. You want to run, you want to be conservative on your play calling. You want to do what you do best, run the football. You've got to look downfield, but you want to get a score before halftime. This is the momentum. If, you, if Arkansas is able to stop them, they'll get the momentum. If Tennessee can drive the length of the field, come down with a field goal, then they go in halftime with the momentum. And both teams have two timeouts left. Good yardage on first down by Lewis. There must have been movement in the offensive line of Tennessee. Yeah, I think it was Fred Weary, the left guard, who kind of flinched. He may have came out of, come out of a stance. Ball start on the offense. A five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. When you see what that does, the clock now down to 442, and they haven't run a play. So, again, that, uh, that helps Arkansas in their battle. They're trying. All they want to do, all Arkansas, they don't want to get the ball back. They just want to stop Tennessee's momentum to go down for score. They'd be happy to go in down 17-14 at half. And instead of second and two, it's second and seven. And Lewis picks up about two yards, which would have been good for a first down, but instead it's third down and about five for the Volunteers. Caver made the tackle. Now you start thinking, well, what if? If Arkansas can come up with a big play right here and stop them, then they'll get the ball in midfield. So then you've got enough time. Does Tennessee, does Tennessee put it up yeah. in the air? I think they do. I think they put the football up in the air right now, and you're going to hear this Arkansas crowd. They know it's a big down. Arkansas could get the football back for an offensive series. They've got to get pressure on T. Martin. That's been difficult. Here comes the blitz from the corner. And, uh, wow, I didn't see a flag. Well, way out on the side. I see a flag way out on the side. 
Now when that flag is thrown then it almost has to be Tennessee that jumped. Arkansas mm -hmm. was going to do an interesting blitz. They brought yep. David Barrett from the side number 18. He rushed in and he was going to do a straight dart blitz. They left it uncovered out here. Left the wide receiver yeah. all by himself. All by himself. That almost has to be a false start. That's good. The officials talk about it. They make sure they're clear on exactly what each one saw. Fans say, hey, we know what happened. <laughs> Dead ball. Defense was in the neutral zone, causing the offense to move. It's a five-yard penalty. Oh, that was Barrett that came in there. And look at Philip Fulmer. He's happy to see that. They get the five yards back. Now, that may make a huge difference. Now, they, they actually marked where the ball was. It wasn't third down and five. It was about third down and seven. Making sure that the marker yeah. is, uh, is in the right spot. Because this could be close to a first down. I don't yeah. think it will be, but it'll be very close. Oh, it is. Oh, it I, is thought, I thought it was third down and more than five. But for Tennessee, it's a good stroke. They moved the chains. Again, the clock at 347, so there's a lot of time, but they're a long way away. Well, that's a good break for the Volunteers. I'm like you, Dave. I think Arkansas had an interesting blitz coming in on the corner that yeah, could have caused problems for Tennessee. That really was interesting. When I saw Barrett come, come diving in there, I'm thinking, what is he doing? He's going away from his coverage. Late in the second quarter. And Martin will throw on first down. Completes it to Wilson. And Cedric Wilson playing with a sore hamstring has a Tennessee first down. Now the clock stops while they move the chains. Tennessee needs to hustle, get up on the ball. And you see Philip Fulmer, he's, he's signaling in. with good play fake right there by T. Martin. Look downfield. Boy, his offensive lineman gives him, they give him time to look downfield. Again, right here. Now dig outside. Again, get that ball. Now he looked to go out of bounds, but then just decided to just get as much yardage as he could. Tennessee got to be thinking points right now. Plenty of time left, two timeouts. Well, that's interesting. They didn't call the play. Here comes the blitz right up the middle by Arkansas. And Martin threw it right into the hands of Stallworth, who dropped the football. But he did drop it. But that was an interesting play because Martin didn't call it before he got to the huddle. Now they're at, they're at 2 minutes and 55 seconds. They wasted a lot of seconds that time. That's when you want to call that play as you run up to the line. Martin has not thrown a, a touchdown pass. He has run for one and threw the one interception, which Barrett for Arkansas picked off and ran in for a, a Razorback touchdown. Let's we'll see if they don't go long in this situation. You've got to pick up 20, 30 yards here real quick to get down in that four down territory. Rolling. And another drop. Gosh, you can't drop him like that. I mean, but you know what? I saw a late flag right in the middle of the field. I wonder if there was an offensive lineman downfield. As I looked right there, I saw number 67, Chad Clifton, about 10 yards, maybe about five yards downfield, but I don't know what that flag was thrown for. Yeah, ineligible downfield. And the rollout, Chad Clifton from the backside just decided he was going to cut across, and you know, those big linemen are trying to get down there, trying to get a block. Philip Fulmer, a former offensive lineman for the Tennessee Volunteers, not real happy about that penalty, I'm sure. Well, I think he likes the effort. Eligible receiver downfield on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat the down. That'll spot the ball back at the Volunteer 33. And it'll be second down for Tennessee. We've spent a long drive going nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> back, forth, back, forth. But I think they're going to go back and maybe challenge David Barrett again. Go with that long one. See if they can set up that... That long blue, you know, that's just that straight down the sideline. Eric, he's out all by himself, top of the screen, one on one. Tennessee really stretching out their offense, and they dump it to Lewis. Lewis has a lot of green grass in front of him. And he stepped out of bounds at the 44 yard line. Why? <laughs> Did you, he just kind of laid up going, oh, golly. I couldn't believe he ran out of bounds. Watch again, little dump right here. Good play selection right here. Get him out. He doesn't even need blocks. But watch this. He just runs out of bounds right there. He steps out of bounds. He didn't have to step out of bounds. Oh, man. Oh, man. He's still been running. 
Great play call by the Volunteers. They oh, had uh, once again they had everything looking like it was going one way and came back the other. And you have a back that can come out of the backfield, as does Jamal Lewis and Travis Henry. Catch that football at the speed they do. Wow. Martin right now fourth all time. Career passing leader of Tennessee. Passing Keith Shula. And that is a first down, a good catch by Graham. And you know what? Barrett didn't let him go out of bounds. So the clock, as soon as they move the chains, they're going to, Tennessee is going to have to hurry on the play, get their play called from the line of scrimmage. Martin looks over to the sideline to see what kind of play they want. Now he has to call it, but the clock will start just as soon as they get those chains moved. Now clock starts ticking down. Still two and a half minutes to play in the quarter. Tennessee now at midfield. Martin gets out of bounds and gets the first down. Well, I'll tell you this, Arkansas is getting no pressure on right now. I know the defensive coaches for Arkansas are saying, well, they don't want to blitz because then you give up coverage. But T. Martin is sitting back there, and I mean he's just able to look downfield, then rush out of the pocket and get that downfield, pick up 8, 10 yards. That time he jumped over top of the flag, came up about a foot short. He's been hurried six times. No sacks by Arkansas. They haven't had a sack in three weeks. Now they're not getting pressure on. They're only trying to rush three and four linemen. You've got to bring those linebackers from the edge to get pressure on them. See if they don't decide to do that. Lewis. And uh, Martin did not pick up the first down on the previous play, and Lewis does on this one. Well, they got two timeouts. It's interesting that they haven't used the timeout. I didn't see a signal yet. They're just letting... That first down, that, now that moves to change, and that stops the clock, but Tennessee holding on to those two timeouts. Still ample time. Volunteers marching it up the field, leading 14, or 17 to 14, rather, and they pick up another first down with Cedric Wilson at the Arkansas 25. Jeremiah Harper made the tackle. Right now, T. Martin is just dropping back, getting all kinds of protection and finding uh, his best option. Yeah, this is just a little curl pattern right here. And T. Martin is throwing. This is kind of like what we used to call seven on seven. No defensive line. Arkansas giving a lot of cushion. They've got to come up. They've got to challenge him. Or T. Martin will eat him up. And it's not Tennessee to use a timeout. It's Arkansas trying to regroup defensively using one of its final two timeouts of the game. Well, we haven't forgotten last year's game, certainly. The big fumble in the Tennessee-Arkansas game. Hard to forget, especially for Hawk quarterback Clint Sterner. I'd be lying if I said I didn't. I, I think after the game last year, I was just happy that I had, I'd have one more shot at him and one more shot to play uh, against him and, and uh, have an opportunity to make something happen. So uh, we, we can't ask for anything more than that. They're, like you said, they're a top-ranked team, and, and, uh, and we got a chance to go in and upset somebody, shock the world again. And they uh, shocked Tennessee early with an interception return for a touchdown, jumped out to the early lead, and have led several other occasions. But Tennessee has answered every Arkansas score. Well, big tough decision here for Houston Nutt. And you see Keith Burns, the defensive coordinator right there, he has to make the decision, do you bring the linebackers and put pressure, and that puts everybody in that one-on-one -on -one coverage, or do you sit back, just try to rush your three, try to keep T. Martin contained? Down to the field and Greg Bowser. Well, Dave, I'll tell you, you know, meeting yesterday with Keith Burns, the Arkansas defensive coordinator, he talked about the last drive Tennessee had last year, said he wished he would have called the timeout. This time when uh, Tennessee driving, he took the timeout right before the half to try and regroup his defense. Very good point. Good point, Greg. And it's hot down there also. A lot of this team's been on the field a lot in the first half, this defensive team for Arkansas. Martin protected well again. Trying to go into the end zone for VZ, but the ball is overthrown. Well, you talk about how do you get pressure? You get pressure by incredible defensive effort, and that's what it's going to take for Arkansas right now to get some pressure. They've got to get one of those defensive linemen breaking through. But I'll tell you this, when you're looking across the line and you see Riley and Coleman and Fred Weary, Clifton, and Josh Tucker up there, that's tough to do. They are, they are just a super offensive line. I think you got to come with pressure. I think you've got to bring somebody from the outside edge. You've got to take a chance. It's a big down, though, second down and 10. If you don't get there, you get burned. 
Here comes the pressure. There's the backs on a blitz and too much pressure for T. Martin. He had to hurry the pass, and it might have been deflected the ball at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, I think Kent might have got a hand on the football. He came wide open on the play, and it was really interesting because when he ran right to the top left of your screen, you see him come right in there. Now watch, see if he gets the hands up. Yeah, that ball just kind of flipped off of the hand there of Martin. But again, Arkansas came with that pressure. That's the way you got to bother T. Martin. Except again, I say, if you don't get there, it's costly because you put all your defensive backs are in one-on-one -on -one situations, and we know the speed that Tennessee has. They've already had a number of important third-down situations today, and now Tennessee play in two weeks. That's the Egg Bowl. I've been there for that. That's a big game. Big Tennessee. down here. Boy, big down. They've been very, very good in third-down conversions today. And they dump it to Lewis. He needs the 15. He got it. Jamal Lewis with a wall of blockers out in front of him. It's finally put down at the 13-yard line. And he gets that first down that moves the, the stops the clock, moves the chain. You're going to see a little flip out. They've really used this screen effectively. Arkansas has not been able to stop this screen. And a little, it's a little different from ground level. This is what it looks like. A lot of players moving around. You can see they turned it back inside, and that's exactly what Jamal Lewis does so well. Pressure for Martin, and it's up for grabs in the end zone, incomplete. Great coverage by Orlando Green, oh. and he had the best chance to catch that football. Boy, he did. He had a hand on the football. Quarterback pressure, first of all, by Harper, number 32, the Rover. He's going to get right in his face. Right there, he's going to get Now, T. Martin throws it up. And 21, Orlando Green, he's got a hand on this football. He just loses it, turns around. Look there, he got a hand on that football. Good outside coverage. Now you want to go right back and do the same thing. Maybe run that little screen pass that they've really been successful with. They still have one timeout left. Well, they've had more success throwing it short and letting their athletes make plays after the catch yeah. than they have throwing the ball downfield. And look at T. Martin. He's got to call timeout. He's got to waste that last timeout. The clock was down to about two seconds. That's right. Five well, I'm yards, sure Philip Fulmer did not want to do that. And you see T. Martin out there with his hands out. He's just going, oh, man. See that? That's just, that's frustration. Couldn't get the play off in time. Had to call and burn the timeout. They didn't like what he saw with Arkansas's defense, and uh, apparently they did not give him the timeout. Yeah, I, was just, I was just thinking that. I think that what happened was he went to signal timeout, but the clock had expired beforehand. Too late. Wow. So they saved their timeout. That may be a value. They might need that more than the five yards. Martin steps up. He is so dangerous, but this time his feet slip out from under him, and down he goes at the 15-yard line. Big down now. Decision time for Arkansas. Do you come with pressure? Third down, try to get him. I think you have to come with some pressure. Here comes the blitz. And down goes Martin. I think he fumbled. No, no, passed it. And there's a flag drop. Yeah, I thought for a minute he, uh, he fumbled it, but I think they're going to call this grounding of the football. You're right, Dave. Grounding the football is going to be the call on Tennessee. It's going to be it's going to be intentional grounding now that's a huge play because it's a spot foul but on Trey Moss he gets the sack number five Arkansas likes to come with pressure and it paid off for him now, now we need to hear the call intentionally grounding the ball on the offense it's a spot foul toss it down fourth down now the field goal becomes in question uh, it's going to be tough we even get three out of this. There's Moss coming from the outside. Nobody. Now he's got Martin. Now watch him as he goes down. See him just kind of fling there. I thought he pulled his arm back, and that's why I thought it was a fumble. But again, this is a pass. But watch when he goes down. Right there. You see, he actually gets the ball blocked. But that could have gone either way. But boy, this is going to... I don't think you kick a field goal from here. They're not going to try. Wow. They brought out the punt team and David Leverton. I wonder why, well, Arkansas, they have a timeout. I wonder why you don't call timeout. Make sure you're set. They would like to back Arkansas up deep, but instead Leverton drills the ball deep into the end zone. So the Razorbacks have dodged, not a bullet, they've dodged a cannonball here late in the second quarter. They, they dodged a landmine. 
And that was a huge play by Arkansas. Tough decision for Keith Burns, the coordinator. Do you come with pressure or do you not? Do you sit back? He came with pressure and it paid off. Now, if you Clint Sterner, you have one timeout left. You got a minute and nine seconds. You got to move the ball an awfully long way. In this situation, I don't know. I, I think you just be happy going to the locker room down 17 to 14. Houston might nut maybe feel a little bit different. It looks like he does, Dave, because Sterner's in the shotgun. He's got two men wide right, two wide receivers left on first down. They give it up the middle to Cobbs. Freshman going to get a big chunk of yardage to the 36-yard line with 102 to play in the first half. Okay, timeout because they moved the change. He's got 102. He needs to call the play quick, get up on the line of scrimmage. But this is a good call. Split right up the middle, picks up huge yardage. Now they're close to being in field goal range. I say closer, I guess I should say. Well, I just started inside of a minute. a dangerous pass. Oh, boy. Andre Lott batted the ball away and almost had enough time to step in front. And if he makes an interception there, Dave, it's a touchdown for Tennessee. And you know what? That's great defense because Lott, you see him shaking his head on this play. Watch what Lott does. He takes the sure fire knockdown. Get the hand in, knock it down. If you step in front and miss it, and again, watch his Sterner right here. He wanted to, he wanted to, he thought interception. See him running back? He was thinking interception, but it's a good call by Lott. You take the safe play. Here comes Tennessee with a little bit of pressure. Oh, now he tries an audible on the line. Oh, this is interesting. What do you see? It's an option, and Sterner is option right to the ground. Now you got to hurry. Westmoreland got in. They still have that one timeout left. He wants to save that timeout. <laughs> Locked down under 40 seconds. I think you got to call timeout now. They're a little bit out of sync. Look at Sterner. He's all the way over here. He needs to call timeout. Sterner keeps walking to the sideline and uh, <laughs> finally gets the play as the clock continues to tick down. Well, we're down to 11, 10, 9. He's got to get this play off. You see, there's the signal. Three, two, one. And then hand it off to Cobbs, and now they'll surely lose their final timeout. Well, I don't know. I, I think what you do now, I don't think you want to make a locker mistake. Room. Yeah, going happy. Well, it could have been worse, certainly, for Arkansas yeah. with Tennessee down at the 15-yard line late in the second quarter. And the Razorbacks uh, satisfied the head uh, into the locker room, regroup, down by only three against the nation's number three-ranked team in the polls, number two. This is a record day in Arkansas. Sunshine, everybody's out in T-shirts. You don't feel this way in late November, but... Uh, Beautiful day. I think that was a key. They've got to keep the ball on offense because their defense is tired. And the kick goes through the end zone or into the end zone. Leonard Scott downs it, so the volunteers will get the ball at their 20-yard line. Good job by Dodson. And Dave, you talk about what they talk about at halftime. They break down into different areas, offensive line, defensive line, linebackers, and that. And they talk, the coach talks to them and says, okay, this works, this doesn't work. And you see T. Martins, those are good numbers for anybody other than T. Martin. He's the kind of quarterback that is just has stellar numbers. But the scrambles have been the big thing. And I'm sure Arkansas talked about that. And he had a couple of drops in the first half also. Big series here. This sets the tone for the second half. And Arkansas came out, come out with the same enthusiasm they had in the first half. Tennessee won the toss of a coin in the beginning and selected the second half option. And it down at the line of scrimmage on first down. That's a good play by Carlos Hall. Oh, and they got pressure on him. They got to him. They brought that big wall of uh, that big wall correct just kind of collapsed down. You see Carlos Hall 50. 55 right there. He's the one that gets up there and they got finally they got to T. Martin. Interesting that T. Martin started off with a, a pass. I thought they'd come out and just run the football. They run just so well. well they've thrown 25 times now. Early in the third. And that might be one of the reasons why they're throwing so much. Arkansas has really stopped the run between the tackles. Well, I'll tell you right now, <laughs> Kurt Davis came up, and we're talking about putting a stop on. Watch Kurt Davis, 94. Right there, Jamal Lewis is bang right into him. Now he just breaks off. And, I mean, now he picks up plus yardage on a play that's supposed to go nowhere. That's the, the tremendous running back he is. 
I'll tell you one thing, these fans know when it's third down, don't they? <laughs> oh, listen. They're up on their feet. Tennessee looking at a third down play. Lewis has, for the most part, been shut down by Arkansas's defense today. Now, how do they get pressure on T. Martin? And the Volunteers convert again on third down. Parker, a tough catch. He had Barrett draped around him. Boy, he did. He had Barrett over top of him. Not a ton of pressure on T. Martin. Late pressure, I think you'd call it. But T. Martin just stays in there and just throws just a beautiful throw. Look at that. Just perfect spiral. Throws it right to the spot. But I'll tell you this, T. Martin, he knew it when he got up. Kurt Davis uh, kind of gave him a little push and said, hey, we're going to be back here a lot more today. But that doesn't bother T. Martin. Nice hole for Lewis. Out across the 40 to the 41, seven or eight yards on first down. Jeremiah Harper tripped him up. Well, Harper's been in a lot of tackles today. He's been rolling around here, four or five tackles, sliding around there. Jamal Lewis just keeps on grinding him. He almost gets better in the second half. Kind of like a racehorse. you got to warm him up in the first half. Well, that's true about both him and Travis Henry. They're, they're running back. Both tailbacks can really hurt you in the second half, especially the fourth quarter. The defense gets worn down. They keep pounding it for the tailback. Lewis, Harper is in on another tackle for Arkansas. Lewis is short of the first down. Well, again, here comes another one of those third down plays. They actually stopped Lewis short that time, brought up, and he actually lost about a, a yard on the play. Another one of those big third down conversions. You see Tennessee, they'll make some switches. They bring in three wide outs. You see him coming into the huddle. Arkansas, they counter, bring two more defensive backs. They go into their nickel. This is like a chess game. Look at the third down conversion for Tennessee today. Oh, there's nobody all the way. Oh, there he is now. But there's nobody at the top of the screen. Martin wants to throw short. There is a flag dropped on the play. He wanted Wilson. Well, when that flag's thrown there, you... Dead ball. Offense. The game on the oh. offense. A five-yard penalty, repeat third down. But they'll get another shot at it. I think, I think Arkansas would rather have had the play go on. But T. Martin can do so many things. You know, he gets back there, he's under pressure, slides up, finds that little crack and runs to the first down. Rolls out, you have to make that decision whether to come up him. Bang, he throws that strike, that ball. He's just got all the tools. Just a marvelous young man. It's going to be on T. Martin's shoulders here on third down and eight. For the Volunteer 35. And now Arkansas, do they come with more than three or four? They rush three, and the ball is incomplete. Kanoi Kennedy putting the arm in the back of Cedric Wilson. And it'll be fourth down, and Arkansas has held Tennessee's offense on the first series of the second half. Well, great players make great plays, and that's Kanoi Kennedy. He's right there running. Actually, that ball might have been, might have been caught. It was thrown a little bit behind. You see Kennedy come in there. But uh, Arkansas is held, and you see that enthusiasm. When they ran on the field, boy, they had some enthusiasm. They've got all 10 up on the, the line of scrimmage coming after the punt. Leverton gets it away. Morreale, who fumbled one earlier, this time has no place to run. Arkansas will have the football at about its 24-yard line after a nice special teams tackle by Anthony Sessions. 34-yard punt and a negative return for the Razorbacks. Early in the third quarter, Arkansas getting the football for the first time in the second half, trailing Tennessee 17 to 14. Philip Fulmer's volunteers, a three-point lead over Arkansas early in the third quarter. A capacity crowd at Razorback Stadium. Now what does Clint Sterner do in this situation? What adjustments has he made at halftime? The throw on first down. They set up the screen play, and it could be a big play for Arkansas. Hobbs, first down for the Razorbacks. Overstreet made the tackle, but well downfield. Well, they took a lesson from Tennessee in the first half. That play has worked well for Tennessee, and now they just do a dump screen right here. Out, and they try to get Cobbs out here, so he cuts back underneath, just trying to pick up those positive yards, keep their defense off the field. Good block downfield by Josh Melton, the center.
Williams in motion. Cobbs struggling to get back to the line of scrimmage. On the corner there for Tennessee was Fred White, the strong safety. Westmoreland also in on the no stop. Not the one yard, maybe no gain. We'll call it second and ten for Arkansas. Yeah, we talk about these Tennessee players, and they're also talented. I'll never forget. I was talking with Darwin Walker, number 58, defensive lineman. We were talking about how strong he was. He said, well, how strong were you, Dave? I said, oh, I benched maybe 340 or something like that. He said, I benched 525. That is incredible. <laughs> That's like lifting the side of a house. Was tripped up near the line of scrimmage. You know what he ran into that time? Darwin Walker's arm. I hate to tell you that. will do it. <laughs> Walker just sticks out that arm, number 58, middle of your screen. When, when Cobbs comes up here, right here, right in there, he just runs into Darwin Walker's arm. <laughs> if he can lift us a house, then it shouldn't be any problem with the 220 pound running back. Oh, he's a hoss. He's a great kid, though. Golly, what a, what a great young man. Got a beautiful future ahead of him. The senior out of Walterboro, South Carolina. Here comes the blitz up the middle. It's intercepted by Tennessee on a double deflection. The Volunteers got it. Oh, I'd rather be lucky than good. That was an incredible play for Tennessee. Three ticks on the ball. Overstreet gets a tip. First, the receiver gets a tip. Overstreet gets a tip. Watch right here. There's the first tip. Up in the air. Cobb. Now Overstreet. Then Raynock uh, Thompson. Oh, boy. That's playing. There's first tip there. Boom. There's the second one. Boom. There's the third one for the interception. Tennessee's got great field position. Yes, they do. Big break for the Volunteers. Their defense forcing the Arkansas mistake. Martin will throw. Beautiful route run, and Tennessee will have the first down. Stallworth had problems catching the ball in the first half, but he made sure looking that one in. <laughs> Running back comparisons on the afternoon, Jamal Lewis only 33 yards on 16 carries, and Travis Henry 14 yards on five carries. Those two have yet to get it going. But as we said, they're uh, wear them down kind of players, and Still could very well come up big in the fourth quarter for the Volunteers. Henry. And it has been tough running between the tackles today against Arkansas. Well, you know, it's amazing. We're probably, what, 100 yards away from the actual field action. You can hear that sound, that popping of uh, pads up there, all the way up here in the booth. That's, that's just big-time play. It's great running, hard running. Offensive line smash mouth, defensive line smash mouth. This is just a great football game. This is one of those ones where you hate to see somebody lose. You know somebody's got to. Two tight ends for the Volunteers. Finlayson and Johnson. Henry breaking free. Travis Henry, touchdown Volunteers. Henry saw was that underneath block by his wide receiver and just saw a huge gaping hole. Toss out to him. He uses that outstanding speed to get outside. Right in here. You see right there is the kick out block now. Just get to the outside and use that speed. His fourth rushing touchdown of the season. He just scampers in. And boy, I'll tell you this. Tennessee makes you pay when, when you make a mistake. You give the ball, they make you pay. The extra point is good. The Volunteers took advantage of a mishandled punt in the first half and went 30 yards for a touchdown. That was a 28-yard run by Travis Henry, just several plays after a volunteer interception. And Tennessee now has a 10-point cushion against the feisty hogs of Arkansas. Razorbacks trying to keep their heads up in this one. No problem for the cheerleaders, but we'll see how the football team responds after Tennessee. Takes an interception and then three or four plays later is in the end zone to build a, a ten point lead. Boy, those are the kind of plays that can turn the tide. If you're an Arkansas fan, you got to come back from that. Cedric Cobbs driven down at the 27. Next week, the Bell South SEC game of the week from Lexington Commonwealth Stadium. These same Tennessee Volunteers, led by senior quarterback Tim Martin. Uh, 
Team Harden will take on the, the Kentucky Wildcats. That'll be a good one. Kentucky still trying to get itself in the bold picture. And Clemson, South Carolina, the interstate rivalry from Columbia. And some of you folks will see that one next week on the Bell South SEC Game of the Week. Well, points off turnovers, Tennessee, we talked about them, how they make you pay. You make a mistake, they capitalize. That's the first catch today. Now, where do they mark it? He was all the way up about the 34-yard line. Oh, they mark it all the way back at the 30. Drove him back and didn't give him much forward progress, did they? Wow. First, first catch of the afternoon for Smith. Running back comparison for the Razorbacks. Cobbs has really been yeah. a spark plug off the bench. Chakuma has not been much a part of the Arkansas offense. No, Chakuma didn't get the quick start that he sometimes gets, so they, they decided to go with Cobbs. Interesting, they come back with Chakuma, hoping that he can get that flash. He's in the backfield here and gets the handle. Nice gain across the 35, near the 37 for Chris Chakuma, Andre Lott the tackler for Tennessee and a player is on the field it is Raynock Thompson wow, shaking you know, up on the play you don't want to lose Raynock Thompson he's one of those tough guys he never comes out and you talk about tough we heard some stories yeah. yesterday he had uh, hernia surgery just a couple of weeks ago yeah, after and, the Georgia game and came back, didn't miss any playing time at all. Well, they had an off week, so he decided to get a hernia operated on. And then they told the story, wasn't it? He had had the, blood, the broken nose yeah. and didn't want to tell coach. He said, I didn't think you'd let me continue playing, so I just didn't tell you that I broke my nose. He may have just fallen wrong. There he is right there, 46, left here. Kind of just kind of fell wrong there today. Well, he is tough out of New Orleans, and uh, he had surgery on an ankle. Played the last four games last year with a bad ankle. Had surgery after the bowl game against Florida State. Well, everybody in Tennessee thought there was going to be a huge drop-off when they lost Al Wilson. But I'll tell you, Raynock Thompson, he turned it up a notch. We've seen Tennessee in a lot of third-down situations. Not as many for Arkansas. They are one for six today. It's third and one. They don't do anything fancy here. He just goes straight ahead. First down, Sakuma to the 43 yard line and the Razorbacks after surrendering a touchdown the to volunteers keep their drive going nice block up front Nathan Norman number 47 he's the lead block see right in your screen right there look at this boom that's oh boy that's what you call a block that's what you call running through him another player down on the field well they're dropping like flies wow. out there and that's Darwin Walker that maybe yeah that's Darwin Walker 58 you lose Thompson and Walker back to back. That's uh, that's some firepower there well, on your defense. Seeing Raynock Thompson walk off, you could tell that wasn't uh, that wasn't a serious one. And uh, this one here, Darwin Walker, he's too tough. I mean, anybody bench press 500 and some pounds? <laughs> he that kind of made a joke out of me. We were doing the SEC meetings. He just turned around and said, "You did what? 3:30? I warm up with 3:30." <laughs> I said, "Thank you." Right now, Walker not able to get up. Thompson, on the other hand, is back on the field for Tennessee, so he'll be all right. And Walker now, it looks like he's going to be able to get up uh, as well. And we're all hoping that uh, Walker's injury is not serious, does not appear to be of a serious nature. Well, the announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation. Any use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Now, the way he's walking with that left arm kind of bent up there, you, you, you just short, sometimes you think short ribs, you know, the small ribs maybe got the breath knocked out of him, but it's good to see him up walking off the field. Don't want to speculate. I'm not a doctor, but uh, having been down there and experienced him, I know what it's like to walk off the field. <laughs> Greg Bowser will be checking up on the Tennessee injury situation. We know that Thompson is all right. He has returned to the battlefield. And Arkansas is first down at their 43. The catch is made by Michael Williams. Well, only a couple of yards, and uh, Sterner paid the oh, price. Sterner paid the price. 
He's got a big 9-3 on his chest right now. And that's Sean Ellis's number, top of your screen. Watch Ellis come in here. Woom, just swallows him. Good clean hit. Sean Ellis, one of those quick linemen off the uh, ball. He's a good one. Arkansas has done a good job. Yeah. By and large, though, protecting Sturman. Well, they've done it with uh, a lot of short passing game. That's why we've not seen the likes of Anthony Lucas and going long, because they've shortened up their pass game. Sterner looking. By Sterner looking downfield, he laid it up there. Beautiful pass by Clint Sterner. Well, you just said that uh, Arkansas had given him time with no sacks. That's the evidence of it. Hodson, the extra point, makes it a three point game. Arkansas answers. And Williams, the transfer from Florida State, makes the big play for Arkansas. We'll be back after a while. Back and forth, back and forth. Now it's Tennessee's turn. And Dodson does not allow the sprinter, Leonard, Leonard Scott, to get it going again. Taking it deep, Tennessee from its own 20. Comparison of the two quarterbacks. They're both seniors and uh, with a lot to play for this afternoon, and they both performed very well, Dave. Yeah. Each one got that tip interception. Sterner with a little bit better percentage-wise. T. Martin with a little bit more yards. Sterner with two touchdown passes. It's just gone back and forth. This has just been a great football game between two well-coached, well-prepared teams. And, of course, Martin with the touchdown run yeah. and other big runs to pick up first downs and keep drives going. Tennessee determined to run the ball between their tackles, and Arkansas just determined to deny. Lewis, the ball carrier, and it'll be second down. You wonder who's going to give up first. Is Tennessee going to uh, abandon the run that they do so well, or is Arkansas just going to wear down? This has just been a game, and you know, both coaches have got to be just thrilled because their teams have responded. For Houston, not his teams has put, just played with tremendous enthusiasm. For Tennessee, they've capitalized. Martin throwing. Stallworth has the first down. Arkansas swarming him out around the 37 yard line is Harper, who has been all over the field. For Arkansas makes his sixth tackle. Well, this is a cross. This is a crossing post pattern. And watch the tail end of this play when he spins around right in here. Woo! Boy, that's what you call running through him. That's Jeremiah Harper. But good concentration. Hold on to the football. Tennessee is well schooled. They don't make mistakes. And you gotta like the fact that the freshman Stallworth has come back, played a solid third quarter after dropping a couple of passes in the first half. That one. Should have been a completion, but I'm not sure Tennessee had a lot going, even if it is caught. Well, that's the play that worked so well, that little underneath screen pass where he's gotten the lineman out. That time, Arkansas, they were trying to throw to Leonard Scott. Arkansas got up high, and T. Martin had to elevate that ball a little bit. You're just seeing all the adjustments to well-coached teams. Houston not undefeated in the state of Arkansas in his career in his second season. Oh, that's all movement, yeah. Offensive lineman. I want to say it might have been Fred Weary again who moved, or no, it might have been Chad Clifton. Dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, repeat the down. And our spotter, <laughs> Kim Anderson, came out of his seat because he said it was Chad Clifton, and I thought it was Fred Weary. I'm sorry, uh, Kim. Never was, doubt that's, Kim. No, don't doubt Kim. <laughs> He's the best. Let's go down to the sideline of Greg Bowser for an injury update. Greg? Yes, for, the, for Tennessee, number 58, Darwin Walker, bruised his left shoulder. They're going to ice it down and see if he can continue. I 
that would be a loss on Tennessee's front four if he can't get back in there. Beautiful throw, Parker. And a nice run to midfield by Eric Parker. Boy, and that line give and T. Martin time. I mean, these Arkansas players are coming hard, but that offensive line, Cozy Coleman, Spencer Riley, Fred Weary, just up there just battling. You see a little bit of pressure here trying to come up front. But look, big man on big man, T. Martin sitting back there, just finding his wide out, looking downfield, finds Parker on a cross. Couple of first downs now for the Volunteers. Martin gets pressure but gets the ball away to Lewis. Jamal Lewis to the 20, caught from behind at the 16-yard line. That's that play that's worked so well when Arkansas blitzes. They try to get that pressure on. This time it's Jermaine Petty from the outside. He's trying to get the pressure. You see 40 right here, bottom of your screen. Now look at this. Look at the good catch. One hand behind him. Now pick up those big blocks. Moss gets a block downfield there. You see a good block by one of those deep offensive linemen. Jamal Lewis just can ramble with the football. And the best plays for Tennessee offensively have been the short dumps yeah. and the screens to their backs and quick receivers. <laughs> Running between the tackles, that's been another story as Henry finds out again. Well, I really like the style that Tennessee runs with. You see how clean they are. They keep that football tight up in there. They don't fumble. That's been a little bit of a problem for them, but uh, they've corrected that real quick. You put it on the ground, they got somebody right behind you that's almost as good. Wrong motivation factor. Henry is the tailback behind Bartholomew. Pressure. Arkansas's got it. Andrea Moss shook the ball loose on a blitz, and uh, Martin had no chance to keep that football. Yeah, from the from the right of your screen, see number five right there. Watch him grab the arm, he grabs the arm, and there the ball comes out. Clearly a fumble. And then on top of that, he recovers the football. Wow, he'll have two big stars by his name on that play. Moss, a senior from Lexa, Arkansas, comes up with a big play. Tennessee was down in that area late in the second quarter and came away with no points. And again, they are not able to put the ball in. Chakuma running hard across the 30. First down, Razorbacks. And you know what sometimes makes you run hard? When the guy behind you runs hard. Cedric Cobbs had those 81 yards. Chakuma had none. Now, all of a sudden, Jakuma's running hard. Getting in there, breaking, running through tackles. Not one man bringing him down. Arkansas moving the football up the center of the field. Jakuma, only a couple to the 33. Westmoreland made the tackle along with Fred White. Well, now it's time to look at the BMW Ultimate Drive of the Game brought to you by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. Second quarter, T. Martin pushing the balls down the field, and he makes the ultimate big play on the ultimate drive. The touchdown run for the Volunteers by T. Martin. Well, that's a great drive. Seven plays, 80 yards. But he just fumbled, and that, uh, that may negate that great ultimate drive. That was a beauty for Tennessee, though. 80 yards on that drive. Culminating in the play by Martin. Sterner threw it high. What a catch. Oh. Lucas brought it down. Wow. Looking back into the sun, Anthony Lucas goes high. He's fearless when he gets up high. And if it's a jump ball, he comes down with it. He's against Andre Lott on this play. Fake play, fake now. Look back to him. Throws it high. Look at Lott go up and Lucas go up. Again, Lucas on a little curl. Now, this is just great concentration. Look how high that ball was. Randy Moss-like play. Yeah, exactly. By Anthony Lucas. Boy, he is a big-time player. Oh. Kuma, Tennessee's got him surrounded. Drops him near the line of scrimmage. Great pursuit by the Volunteers. 
Well, speed kills. If you're Tennessee, that speed is those those defensive backers and that secondary. They run to the football. Very rarely are they beaten to the outside. You see, Dominique Stevenson wears a 28. You think of the 28 as being a defensive back. He's a middle linebacker, but he runs like a defensive back. Got that great speed pursuit. Well, he played tailback in high school and was a tremendous high school tailback, so not surprising. Stevenson, uh, the junior from Gaffney, South Carolina. Well, a lot of time. He's done all day, and then yeah. he still couldn't find anybody open. Great job by Tennessee's secondary. Oh, did you see Sterner? He was really upset. He got piled that time. Someone came in and hit him late. You can see it. Well, who it was? Let's maybe we see it. But see, he throws the football, and watch what happens here. A lot of time. Now, right there. See, he's mad. He got thrown down. He jumps up. Look at him. He wants to see him. He wants to see a penalty. Shot Moore took a few liberties after uh, the ball had been thrown. Yeah, you don't throw a quarterback down like that. Tennessee was lucky to avoid that penalty. That's where you say your hand got stuck in the jersey. <laughs> Couldn't get it out. You're yeah, right. Now you used that one a few times, huh? <laughs> yes, I did. Incomplete. Williams, the intended receiver. The ball was thrown high. He stretched out. But couldn't haul it in, and Arkansas will punt the ball away to the Volunteers. Boy, as good a pattern as that was to Michael Williams on a crossing pattern, Anthony Lucas probably would have caught this because he goes up a little higher. But again, right off the fingertips, you got to catch that football. In big games like this, you got to come down with it, and nobody knows it more than Michael Williams. Lucas punt, fielded by Parker at the 12. He went down hard at the 25-yard line. Boy, I think he fumbled the ball on that and came, fell right down on top of the football. That's a big hit by Chuck Nally on special teams. Well, let's look around the SEC presented by Morgan Keegan. A showdown in the West later today. Undefeated in eighth-ranked Mississippi State heads to Tuscaloosa to take on 11th-ranked Alabama. The Bulldogs lead the Crimson Tide by one game in the West. The winner of the game will have the inside track to represent the division in the Southeastern Conference Championship. Other games today, Florida, South Carolina. That one's close in the second half. Auburn at Georgia. Houston's at LSU. Kentucky, Vanderbilt. Both of those teams trying to become bowl eligible. 17-3 Florida in the fourth quarter. Tennessee's hopes to return to the SEC Championship game as Lewis carries across the 35 hinge on the Volunteers' ability to win out in the conference and South Carolina upsetting Florida today. That's the only way the Vols can get back into the SEC championship game in Atlanta. Well, they're taking care of business here with seven seconds to play in the third quarter, but this game still very much in doubt as Arkansas has made it a battle royale. Boy, for Philip Fulmer, I can tell you, he's on the sideline. He's got those fingers down to about the first knuckle because he realizes one play and Arkansas can take the lead. That's a nervous coach stroking along the sideline. It was a thrilling finish last year in Knoxville. We could be in for something similar today. After three periods of play, the Volunteers 24, the Razorbacks 20. His team to keep the game close into the fourth quarter, and he felt like his ball club would prevail. Philip Fulmer talks about the BCS every Monday with his football team, and then it's not discussed after that. Well, they're in a battle today to try and stay in contention for a spot in the national championship game. Fourth quarter is underway from Fayetteville. That's Travis Henry, and uh, he's been described as a 220-pound muscle. Oh, he is. He is something. Well, you can't roll block him. You've got to wrap him up. He's got thighs, he's got legs, and you're not going to take him down swiping at him. Right here, that's not going to take him down a roll block. He runs through those. Good decision right there. He got about an extra four yards by turning back up inside field. Oh, just an incredible oh. high school athlete down in Frostproof, Florida, where he set all kinds of records, ran for over 4,000 yards in his high school career, and continues to put up big numbers in the Southeastern Conference. Martin just threw that ball away. Double coverage on Cedric Wilson, and uh, Martin knew that he had nothing. Here's a look at our stats through three quarters, presented by John Hancock. 
And uh, let's see, shaping up uh, to still be relatively close. Tennessee still leading in terms of yardage, 378 to 273. Yeah, I think the yards rushing is the big thing. I think that's the surprising thing for Tennessee. Only 126 yards rushing. They are usually much stronger than that. And they want to run the football. They average 166 rushing, rushing yards per game. And they might get that and a lot more before it's all over with because as we've said their offensive line wears you down their tailbacks Lewis and Henry wear you down and Arkansas's defense has been out there a lot today. Now this is a typical play right here. Give the ball underneath find that hole just seam through nobody brings him down in the backfield. They just don't cut him down in the backfield. Jamal Lewis runs with that great strength. That time he pulled right on through Jamal Harris the middle linebacker. Only got a couple though. And it's going to be a third down play for the Volunteers. They've been very successful on third down conversions today. Well, this is a big one because if they don't make it, they're going to have to punt the ball. If they do make it, they're going in for another score. Comes a blitz. Penalty flag is dropped, and I think Tennessee once again did not get the ball snapped. Well, the clock is down to zero. Dead ball. You're late You're right. game. On the offense, a five-yard penalty, repeat the down. Is that the third time? Yeah, that's exactly the third time. Well, what happens is you signal the play in from the sideline. They're a little bit nonchalant to get back in the huddle. You don't huddle up real quick. And Philip Fulmer doesn't like it. I can tell you that. Look at him. <laughs> that's not the look at him. Oh, boy. Philip, uh, just a marvelous coach. Tremendous record. Oh, you look at his record. That's an incredible record. He sets a top the all-time uh, active coaches and winning percentage. There's a big third down play, now third and 13. Martin's going for all of it. And Wilson is overthrown. Tennessee will play field position with Arkansas and hope to back the Razorbacks deep. Was well, a huge punt here. You don't want to punt the ball into the end zone. You want to punt it down inside the 10 yard line because you know that 10 Tennessee's defense is so strong. They get the ball right back. Arkansas was not able to get. Oh, they had to call a timeout. On the field. They used the timeout. Yeah, they didn't know if Tennessee was going to go for it on fourth down or not. So they kept their defense out there, tried to make the switch and couldn't get it before the clock. So the Razorbacks use a timeout. No, about an hour and a half. <laughs> Rossi Morreale standing deep as Leverton unloads it. Great punt by Leverton. Oh, what a, that looked like a nine iron just died and came right back. Might have looked like your nine iron, but not mine, Dave. <laughs> Well, on Monday, Tennessee moved up to number two in the BCS series rankings. What does head coach Philip Fulmer think of the BCS? It's probably the best system that uh, that's out there right now until, you know, we finally do a playoff, uh, which I've been a, somewhat of a proponent of. Um, but I do think it's a good system uh, in the fact that uh, it can come close uh, to getting, if not get the two best teams in America to play at the, at the end of the year. And there you see the BCS standings as of November 13th. Tennessee jumping over both Florida and Virginia Tech last week. But they must hold on today in Fayetteville, Arkansas. Sterner incomplete to Williams. Well, you know, you look at that BCS standings, and I think Philip Fulmer came in here hoping that he could win by 17 points. That seems to be the magical margin of victory. But he knows he's in the dogfight right now. He'd be happy just coming out of here winning. The heck with the 17 points. There's so many factors in that, and it's really an interesting formula. Looks at strength of schedule, who you play, uh, what your margin of victory is, and losses. And he's still got Vanderbilt and Kentucky after this weekend. Too much improved football team, Fandy in particular. Williams, first down, Arkansas. Oh, perfect pass by Clint Sterner. When he threw that football, he threw it before his receiver looked back. Who Williams is running the pattern. Now watch this. Right here, the ball's in the air. Look right there, boom, right in this, and he falls right on the first down marker. Who Williams has been a good factor today in this football game. Well, if he didn't do anything else except that 72-yard touchdown reception, then that would have been plenty, but that was a 
Nice catch to give Arkansas the first down near the 20 yard line, and it gets the Razorbacks out from deep in their end of the field. Chakuma, oh. so Tennessee racks him up near the line of scrimmage. Boy, and now's when Tennessee's depth gets to you a little bit. They've, they're too deep in every position, got a lot of strength. You take a Darwin Walker out of there, and you bring someone in like a Lloyd, D'Angelo Lloyd or Butler, or you bring in someone like that, you can come in and just play right at the same level. I think they've gone three deep today because yeah. Rashad Moore, a exactly. redshirt freshman tackle, has been on the field. In fact, he just came off. So you're right. They do wear you down in the fourth quarter, and that's what they're banking on right now. Arkansas out to the 25-yard line. And uh, Emmanuel Smith gets his third catch of the day. Andre Lott made the tackle. What they tried to do that time is they tried to run deep and stop Emmanuel Smith, number 81, right out here in the flats. You see the flash going. Now he's standing right here. Now you hope that he can break a tackle right in here. But watch that secondary coverage come in there. You see the people coming in to help. Those are linebackers. That's Westmoreland coming running in there. Nice ball game for Clint Sterner in his final appearance at Razorback Stadium. The blitz. Williams. Arkansas gets the first down. Boy, Sterner's right on the mark. Nothing fancy, just oh. a two or three step drop. A quick out by Boo Williams. And Wait. Tennessee's defense is back on its heels a little bit. Well, you have to respect Boo Williams' speed. He's a big guy, too, 6'4. So he can come down with the football, and he's got that speed to get downfield. But I'll tell you this, Sterner is right on mark. Last week, he had a terrible week. Coaches said it just wasn't his week against Ole Miss. He's having a great day today. And so is Williams, a cousin of Tamarick Vanover, former Florida State receiver, now in the NFL. So Cuba, and you can hear those pants popping. Oh. Way up here in the press box as Chuck Kuma runs into John Henderson. Big 98 for Tennessee. What a job he's done after Billy Ratliff oh, yeah. was injured early in the season. Yeah, when Ratliff goes down, I mean, that Tennessee fans all of a sudden thought, oh, boy, there goes our defensive line. But number 98, John Henderson, really stepped up. And, and, I mean, his level of play, he increased his level of play and plays on the same level. Those players are very close, of course, to Billy Ratliff. Hated to lose him. That play netted just one yard, so it's second and nine. Williams is the intended receiver. Williams plays defensive back and knocks the ball away from the defender, Andre Lott. Well, that was a throwback. What happened that time is Sterner took, and he looked to his left. Just look, watch him. He's going to come out of here, look to left, look to left. Now the pass is going over here. You see the play action, but double coverage out here. Really good coverage. And you're right, Williams goes up there and just plays defensive back to break it up. Andre Lott on that coverage, and Raynock Thompson, the outside backer, running. There are a few scores from uh, around the world of college football. The Gators, a two touchdown lead against Lou Holtz's hapless game packs. And uh, a score a thon in Atlanta. Georgia Tech and Clemson racking them up. Chris Chakuba. And Tennessee's defense stops the Razorbacks on third down. John Henderson, Anthony Sessions. Combine on the tackle, and uh, we're moving inside of the 10 minute mark now in this fourth quarter. And Tennessee David, clinging to a three point lead. And David, you look for positives. The positive was that Arkansas had the ball inside their 10. They drove it out. They got their defense a little bit better field position. Well, that's a dangerous catch by Eric Parker with all kinds of Razorbacks around him. But he was able to hold on to the football. 40-yard punt for Arkansas. So the Volunteers take it over at their 26-yard line in the fourth quarter. Point lead with 9.39 to play here in Fayetteville's Razorback Stadium. Four wideouts for T. Martin on first down. Oh, he's got some blockers out in front of him. And he's got great speed. That's Stallworth brought down in midfield. Dante Stallworth 
who has been a factor today, been coming on strong in recent weeks. Seven catches in their last two games. And Stallworth makes the play here. Well, Petty gets some pressure on T. Martin, but that ball's gone. And look at those big linemen. That's Josh Tucker, 77, out there throwing a block. 68, that's Spencer Riley, the center. So they're getting downfield. Interesting, Tennessee electing to spread out Arkansas. They want to pad their three-point lead. Travis Henry. Good yardage on first down to the Arkansas 45. A five-yard pickup. And that puts them in second and five position. Let's go to Greg Bowser. Well, number 31, Jamal Lewis running back for Tennessee Volunteers. Jamal sprained his ankle. Uh, they took him out the game and retaped his ankle. They're going to try to see if he can go back in. If he can't, then Travis Henry is going to have to carry the load the rest of this ball game. That's what Travis Henry did last year in Knoxville yeah. in the fourth quarter. I want to tell you, when Jamal, Harris, when Jamal Lewis went down last year, everybody said, well, that's the end of that year for Tennessee. But what a year Travis Henry had. Somebody got a piece of him as he crossed the 45. Kurt Davis tripped him up. You just, uh, if you're defending him, you just hope he doesn't get a full <laughs> head of steam because once that happens, it's very tough to bring him down. I'll tell you one thing, they call him a block of cheese. <laughs> Sometimes I guess that may be fitting. Oh, man, does he run hard. And he just comes at you. He runs tough hard. I mean, it hurts when you hit him. Phil, Phil Fulmer, and look at him jumping up and down saying, get that playoff quick. Hurry up, get up to the line. And now Tennessee's trying to get a timeout. Well, someone ran from the sideline, and they were on the field. Now, that's interesting. Someone ran out from the sideline. Now, I've never seen that. Someone ran off the sideline and signaled timeout. Wow, that was Leonard. Leonard Scott jumped out there and got, <laughs> got in the official's face and called timeout. So the Falls uh, almost took another delay of game penalty, but they used the timeout, one of their three, for the second half. We'll be back after this message from Pizza Hut. <laughs> We're sitting here, Dave, talking about what they ought to do. I think they ought to do that. I think they ought to do that. Well, let's see what they do. All right, amen. It's a big one. Big third down play for the ball. And they're going to toss it to Henry and hope he can get yardage. No. The Razorbacks have stacked them up all day long, and they do it again. I told you they should have run inside. <laughs> well, they decided to go wide, and that's been a good play for them. But look at the Arkansas. Ten men on the line of scrimmage. Everybody moving along there. Watch 29, Kanoi Kennedy. He slides along in there. He's in on the tackle. 45, that's Jamel Harris. Those guys have had some tackles today. Leverton will punt the ball again. Hoping again to back Leverton the Razorbacks up. For Tennessee, Morreale, deep for Arkansas. Lassie Morreale looks up into that bright sky. And this one ricochets into the end zone. He didn't have the backspin Leverton that he did on his prior kick. And we'll look at some other scores. That one hasn't changed in several minutes. That's the huge one in the West Division. Just getting started. Ooh, oh, my goodness. That's a defensive struggle. <laughs> There's another defensive struggle. 87 points. Georgia Tech able to hold on against the Clemson Tigers. Well, seven minutes to go. It's crunch time now if you're an Arkansas fan. It's also crunch time if you're a Tennessee fan. Tennessee's got to get penetration. They've got to get pressure on Sterner. And they got to stop the Arkansas run, which Takuma absolutely had nothing. Boy, when he ran into Sean Ellis, 93, I mean, it was just like stop, boom, down he goes. John Henderson and Sean Ellis in there. That tackle end combination, big tackle. Tennessee's front four, Overstreet, Walker, Henderson, and Ellis have been outstanding all season long. That's why they're, uh, that's why they are where they are. But Tennessee is just uh, right at their per game average in rushing yardage. Interesting, they brought Cobbs in now. Maybe you might give him a little bit more flash. What a great catch by Smith to hold on to that ball. He knew he was going to get hammered. 
Or when you go across, look at look at Clint Sterner. That's the way to catch the football. You lead by example, and that's what Clint Sterner's telling them. Crossing pattern over the middle. You know you're going to get hurt. Stretch out, get down, bring the football down. And Clint Sterner was the first one to run downfield and tell Smith, congratulations, good catch. It's a way to go after it. Tennessee needs a stop now. They need to get penetration. That gets the ball out to the 38. The freshman Cobbs. Deion Grant chasing him. And Grant runs him out of bounds at the 45-yard line. This Cobbs has a chance to be special, Dave. Well, you talk about him being special and just being a freshman. Did you see him switch the ball that time? Took the ball with the right hand off Sterner right here. Takes the ball with the right hand. Now watch him switch right to left to get the ball to the outside. Right in here, he switches, gets that ball to the left hand to the out of bounds. It gets a good block downfield right there. His wide out gives him a good block downfield. That's what you want to do. Drive him off the football. Boo Williams got a good block. Tom's on the sideline. Here's the third string tailback. Jenkins. And Jenkins is across the 50 to the 47-yard line of Tennessee before Deion Grant is able to bring him down. Michael Jenkins gets his first carry of the day. Boy, this is a good run. Fearless. You got to be fearless in there. You know you're going to get hit. This is a great Tennessee team. You're going to get arms swiped at you, but you just got to keep on running through, keep your feet going, and fall forward. And I'll tell you this. We talked about the emotions of this game. This crowd is right on that frenzied spot. They're really getting in it. If Arkansas can drive here and kick a field goal, that crowd's going to really be in this game. Chris Chakuma. Bouncing off tacklers to the Tennessee 41. A gain of six. And Sean Ellis got hurt on that play on the back side of it. He's he got up. up. Yeah, he got up limp and he's walking it off. Here's Sean Ellis, number 93, coming off right there. Looks like he might just clip an ankle right in there. Turned an ankle. Yo, that right ankle. Yeah, he just turned that right ankle over. You see him grab it, but he got up and walked off. Boy, you want him in crunch time. In Tennessee, you want him in there. Tom's is the tailback. Look out for the freshman. He skips arm Deion Grant and steps out of bounds at the 25-yard line. Arkansas is running the ball against Tennessee's vaunted defense. Well, we talked earlier about him sticking with the play. That's exactly what Cedric Cobbs does. He sticks with the play. Designed to go inside now. Get out there. Use that speed. Stiff arm in there. Get him some yardage. Picks it up. And surprisingly, Arkansas has run the football. Look at that. Over 100 yards, 7.5 yards per carry. Let's go to Greg Bowser. Ball number 93, Sean Ellis uh, twisted his ankle just a little bit, but he is going back in the ball game. And if I'm Tennessee, I would want him in there. You better believe it. Cobbs ramped up, dropped down at the 25. Henderson, a sure tackler, sophomore from Nashville. Grabbed on and held on and wouldn't let Cobbs get free that time. Yeah, I think John Henderson is one of those real stars. He, he has just stepped up his play, came in here, just a sophomore, big guy, 6'7", 285, but he plays strong. And when he gets those arms on you, you don't break tackles when John Henderson wraps you up. Second down, Razorbacks inside of four minutes left, trailing by a field goal. Blitz from Tennessee. Oh, he's got a lot of time. Lucas, touchdown. with the extra point as the Razorbacks have gone on top by three.
and it is now a four-point game, and Tennessee will need a touchdown to win this football game with 3.44 remaining, and the All-American, Anthony Lucas, on the receiving end from the all-time leading passer in Arkansas history, Clint Sterner. Well, you knew right away he had time to pass. Look at this, sits back there, offensive line giving a lot of time, and who does he go to? His go-to guy, Anthony Lucas, all day long across the middle. Now watch Sterner's time right here. Little play fake, but look at this. Stand back there, has time to pump fake. And then you see Lucas one-on-one. -on -one up high to go get the football great concentration good reaching good position but look at current clint sterner knows it now i know they've told us all day all week long that they've tried to avoid the emotion from last week but i want you to look at that play and look at clint sterner does that young man want this one or what three touchdown passes today for sterner he has played a marvelous game the houston nuts team has uh, Played probably, I guess, Dave Rowe as well as oh. they could play. Yeah, they so can't far. play any better. They're 344 away from a, a big upset. But well, Tennessee has a knack and has the ability to come back and take it right away from them. Well, I know that in that situation, you want Clint Sterner to throw the football. But if I've got to come back with 344 left, I would take a lot of the players off of this Tennessee team. I'd take a T. Martin. T. Martin. I'd certainly take Jamal Lewis, or I'd take Travis Henry. I'd like that big offensive line that Philip Fulmer has. He's got a bunch of winners. And Leonard Scott, the dangerous return man, brings it out across the 30-yard line. I can promise you Keith Burns, the defensive coordinator for Arkansas, you talk about six feet off the ground. Right now, he is calling on the Hogs, calling on his defense. And for T. Martin, he's had a good day, 276 yards. Nothing more important than right now, David. Travis Henry is in the backfield as Lewis still shaken up. And remember last year, it was Henry that ran the ball in the closing minutes to put Tennessee in front. Parker, did he hold on? Yes, he did at the 41-yard line, close to a first down. There's the senior from Tallulah, What's up, Louisiana. What's up, Tallulah? I love you, baby. I'll see you season. Yeah, now you don't want to celebrate too early. <laughs> but he's one of the one of the class guys in this game. A wonderful guy. Great to talk with. Turned around and said, really appreciate you taking time to take our picture. Really appreciate you taking time to talk with us. And, uh, there's those kind of quality players on both sides of this football. That ball looks like it might be just an inch short. Lucas may set a Southeastern Conference record. If the season were over today, he would for average yards per catch. Oh, yeah. 21 yards every time he catches the ball. On average, that touchdown went for 23. Yeah, he didn't hurt his average on that yeah. touchdown. Well, this is a huge series right now. you got three minutes and 24 seconds left. There's no second chances for Tennessee. They have got to drive and get a touchdown. Can't kick a field goal. For Arkansas, they're calling on their defense. They need one stop. Tennessee, they need one drive. This is crowd. Everybody's on their feet standing. There's nobody sitting down. 8,000 Tennessee fans here. And Tennessee wants to make sure they get the first down. They almost get a lot more. <laughs> yeah. T. T. Martin moves to midfield. Boy, he broke out of that pile. Everybody was spearing in the middle, and he just kind of slipped off the outside tackle. There was a big hole on that play. Watch T. Martin. Everybody pinching down inside, trying to get penetration. Look at that. Nobody out there. If he breaks that tackle, oh, boy. Well, there's no panic on T. Martin. Just looking at him, he's a director out there. Here comes Arkansas with some pressure. Stallworth. And he stayed in bounds at the 42-yard line. Plenty of time for the Vols, though. They have two, mo two timeouts remaining and 2.45 on the clock. Boy, and they're playing hard. This is that underneath little stop, hitch pass, wait for those linemen. They see the big linemen getting out there. That's Tucker, 77, getting out there. There's no saving it right now. Delaney Kent, big hit. Oh. Look at Keith Burns. He, he coaches with emotion. <laughs> There's a timeout situation. Martin rolling left. Overthrows Wilson, his intended receiver. Boy, and here comes the third down and about two. 
This is that tough call. Well, what did they do? <laughs> they had uh, an opportunity, this very same yeah. situation, almost on the same place in the field. They pitched it to exactly. Travis Henry, couldn't get the first down, and now it's decision time again for Philip Fulman. Well, you see Tennessee looking over there. They're looking over to see what play is going to be signaled in. The clock starts ticking down. I think you go right back with the big guy, Travis Henry, right up the middle. But no, they're spread out. This is going to be interesting. They're spread out in two double double slots, both wide. It'll be fourth down. Tennessee fourth. figuring they were in two-play territory to pick up a yeah. first down. But and you now know, it's fourth and two. But you know, I don't think I think that Carlos Hall might have tipped that football. The direction of that football coming off the line looked as if, as if it might have gotten tipped. It wasn't even close to the receiver. Now what do you do? Let's see if we see Carlos Hall, number 55, tip this ball. Right there, yeah, see the ball get tipped? Well, I tell you, number 21, you see right there, Orlando yeah. Green, he wishes he hadn't tipped it because he might have had an interception. Here's the big play. Fourth down. Stallworth, first down Tennessee. Wow, was that close. Number 21, Green, was right in there. Green almost came down with that tackle. Watch this off the line. Now, Green 21. Now, look at him come right up there. If he makes the tackle right there. And that was 77, Josh Tucker, who got that block. If Tucker doesn't get that block, that play is over. The comeback is still alive for Tennessee. Oh, my. Whoa. What a hit. <laughs> Jeremy Flowers almost decapitated. And how about well, we have a flag passer. in the backfield? Yeah, I bet it's roughing the passer. It might be Randy Garner. That is going to be a huge play. Oh, boy. And you can see the Tennessee players. They're pointing forward. Let's hear what the call is. Personal foul. Low to the head. Low to against the, the head. defense. 15 yards. Automatic first down. Wow. Boy, that Arkansas was... can't believe <laughs> that <laughs> misfortune. Is Tennessee going to get the big first down? Now there's the hit. Gosh, that wasn't a big hit. But look at that hit right there. Jeremy Flowers, number 30, coming in there. I'll tell you, that's a tough one. But, you know, we're trying to protect, I say we, meaning the SEC and the officials are trying to protect quarterbacks and trying to protect players. Blow to the head is a serious thing. Pressure, Martin throws it up and uh, oh. throws it away. Oh, that's grounding the ball. That's got to be grounded. No question. Quarterback pressure there. Carlos Hall, 55. And look at T. Martin's face. Keith Burns, the defensive coordinator. And you can see the enthusiasm he has, David. Man, now it's just trading swaps back and forth. This is like a prize fight. Takes the grounding on the offense. Spot foul. Loss of down. We go to third down. Now, what the rule is on this is you don't have, you can throw it at a player, but are you trying to save a tackle? Now, watch this. He's definitely in the grass. There's nobody out there. Yes, he throws it 20 yards, but he was trying to save a sack. So that's a good call. Loss of down. Not if you're a Tennessee fan, but it's no. a good call. <laughs> the correct call. Yes, the correct call. Ball is at the 30. It is second down. The catch is made by Wilson at the 17-yard line. I can tell you this, Arkansas, all they're trying to do is a big one. Tennessee has to reach the 10 to get a first down. Incomplete. Sterner had some pressure, and the Razorbacks had great coverage. Wilson, the intended receiver. And Hall had a yeah. lot of pressure on the quarterback. Yeah, number 55, Carlos Hall. He gets in there, comes around the backside. You're going to see him right there, get that pressure. And this is the non-catch. Ten-yard line, look at this. The ball's in there, definitely on the ground. The official in a great position to make the call. Now you're going to hear the call. Listen to these Razorback fans. The ten-yard line is what Tennessee must reach to keep this drive going. Oh, what a play. 
T. Martin looking downfield, trying to find that crossing pattern, going for all the marbles. Steps up and he has them open, but look at this defensive play right there. And who is it? Number 18, David Barrett. Again, good coverage, one-on-one -on -one coverage. Barrett had those two pass interferences early, David. Wow, now, if you're Clint Sterner, do you kneel down? Oh, boy. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think he does have one timeout left. I think you kneel down. And Sterner will take a knee, remembering what happened last yeah. year in Knoxville. It was at, at the 143 mark last year when the ball was fumbled, but Houston Nutt says, uh, let's play it conservative. You remember what Houston Nutt said? If I had had to do it all over again, I would have taken a timeout and would have talked to Clint Sterner. And they had that timeout on the exchange. I'll tell you, Houston Nutt, his emotions up and down. Here's the fourth down play. Look at that. He doesn't even get excited. Wait a minute. It's like, what happened? Was that fourth down? <laughs> well, he doesn't want to get a celebration penalty. No. And Barrett, who was under the gun and exposed early in the game, came up big late in the ball game against Cedric Wilson. Well, two things to note here. First of all, if you're Arkansas, you've got a minute 18. Tennessee has one timeout left, I think. No, they don't have no timeouts left. So you're going to run the clock down. I think if you're Arkansas on the fourth down plan, on the fourth down play, maybe you think about taking a safety. You're up four points, but then you give the field goal will win for you. I don't know. I think you just want to run the clock down and get out of here. Clint Sterner knows what to do. Arkansas on the verge of gaining some big revenge, and uh, somebody just came yeah. breaking across the line of scrimmage. Well, what that is is what happened. You can see right there Houston Nuttown's players. Get back on the sideline. You don't want to do that stuff. Right now, you don't do that stuff. All Tennessee was trying to do was Raynock Thompson was trying to guess the snap count and come in and cause a fumble. That's all it was. That's clear football. Raynock is such a, a intense competitor right here. You see him coming over the top. All he's trying to do is just, just guess the snap count. Dead ball. Unsportsmanlike conduct on the defense. 15 yard penalty. Ejection. Oh, and that gives him a first down. Oh, and they ejected Raynock Thompson from the football game. Oh, I hate to see that. That's just, I mean, that's just hard play. He's just trying to guess the snap count, cause something. He comes over top. He's a tremendous competitor. Emotions are running high in Fayetteville, Arkansas, and Thompson got a little bit carried away. Well, now think about it. Now you've got four more downs. Tennessee has no timeouts. It's over. It should be over. Now watch they're going to go into this defense. And for Clint Sterner, he had a year to think about it. He said, no, it didn't bother me, but let me tell you something. I know I've been down on that field, down deep inside of your heart. It bothers you. Well, it hurt him. And he had one chance for redemption. He said last year, the only positive about this is that I play him again next year in Fayetteville. You see that defense? That, de that offense is designed so in case it's a bad snap, they've got someone deep. What a play. What a play to, to Anthony Lucas. Well, here's our Amico play of the game. And... Uh, what do you think, Dave? Well, how about the touchdown catch by Anthony Lucas, oh. which gave Arkansas the lead late in the game? You go to your winner, you go to your champion, and Anthony Lucas is that. That was a tremendous drive. Arkansas refused to be denied. They ran the football about eight or ten times to really set that up. But this, I want to tell you something. It's going to be tough getting out of here. Listen to this crowd. They're swarming the sidelines. This is going to be, this is going to go down. And Houston Nutt, he stays undefeated. That's right, in the state of Arkansas. And for Tennessee, it's heartbreak. National championship not within reach after this one. So they will not have a chance to defend their title. Houston Nutt overcome with emotion. And the fans going hog wild in Fayetteville. But the announcer said, please stay off the field. There's right. got to be 60,000 on the field. And the goalpost has no chance. No chance. When they rebuild the stadium, they're going to have to put up new goalposts because they're coming down.